Uh, all right. All right. Uh, welcome everyone to the December 16th uh, Board of Architectural Review for the village of Mamaroneck. Um, obviously, we're uh, on virtually tonight. Um, so, um, let's see. The uh, if as we go through, uh, we'll we'll call the um, participants in the, on the according to the agenda. Uh, when when you come on, uh, please be prepared to. Uh, share your screen and have available whatever materials you would like to show us um, and, and walk us through those. If there are other interested parties, like for example, if the architect is doing the presentation, but the owners are here and may want to have something to say at some point, please, have, please join on too. Even if you don't say anything, it, it will save us later if you do decide you want to say something of, of trying to get you hooked in, which has is, is proven cumbersome in the past. Um, if there are any um, people in the audience who have uh, questions or comments would like to participate, um, I'll try to remember to uh, ask if, if there's any uh, people raising their hand at the end. But if I forget, make yourself known with raise your hand, chat, whatever. Uh, let, it, let us know that you have questions or comments and, and we'll try to accommodate you. Um, let me, uh, we have a full uh, board here tonight, so there should be no issues with uh, uh, quorums or anything like that. Um, I will introduce the board. Um, we have uh, Cindy Lee, Andrew Wallowitz, Yvonne Levine, and, and uh, just joining us uh, tonight, uh, uh, someone who was on the board before, but has rejoined, uh, Larry Cohen. And, um, and myself, I'm uh, William Binzer. Um, and I guess with that, uh, we can get started. Um, the first order of business is approval of the minutes from the November 18th meeting. Um, uh, those, I trust everyone has had a chance to look at those. Larry hasn't, obviously, but the others. Um, so I'll ask uh, if there's any questions or comments on those. No. No. Okay. And um, then. Okay. And, <laughs> and if uh, somebody seconded, please. Okay, Cindy did. And uh, all in favor? Aye. Yeah. Aye. Okay. Aye. Okay. Okay. Somebody's asked for us to give an objective for each project review. I'm, I'm not kind of sure what that means. The, but the format, just so I could uh, maybe clarify that, is we would ask people to present their application for which they're seeking uh, approval of the Board of Architectural Review. Um, we'll discuss it and, uh, you know, maybe have some questions or comments on it and, and then at the end uh, vote on whether it's approved or not. You know, our criteria are basically that uh, how, it, how it fits in with, with, for the community. I mean, we're not building, we're not here for uh, zoning and we're not the planning department and we're not the building department. We are here to make sure that the character and uh, sense of community is, is maintained. So that's, that'll be our focus is to, you know, in, in short kind of what it looks like and how it fits in community. Um, hopeful that, hopefully that answers that question. Okay, with that started then, uh, there being no old business, we'll jump right into the, uh, the new business. And the first application I have is uh, 108 Mamaroneck Avenue. Hey, okay, Brian. Hi, I'm here. Just give me one second here. Sure. And uh, uh, the business owner, Lauren Porat, is is also, uh, I believe, uh, listening in or uh, okay. may like to join if that's possible. 
That's fine. Thank you. Excuse me. Okay. Hello. 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 Hi. Oh, okay. Um, all right. So good evening, everyone. Um, the application we have uh, for you tonight is actually a sign that was already uh, approved at another location uh, down at the other end of Mamaroneck Avenue. Uh, the business is relocating down to 108 Mamaroneck Avenue, which is down by the post road into the prop into the location that was form formerly uh, Pino's Palette. Um, so the sign doesn't change. It's, it's, it's just uh, moving down the block, basically. Uh, so in terms of the, the location, uh, Pino's pallet, uh, facade width is 30 feet, 33 feet across. Um, uh, do you have, uh, we're not seeing the images. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, hold on. I thought I, uh, see you I, I thought I did that. Hang on. Whiteboard. Should say a Should I share? Yeah, yeah, no, I got it. Hang on. Um, hold on. Can you see this? Yes, but it, it's oh. the, we see your main desktop. Yeah. So just if you just go and okay. Here, okay. sorry about that. Okay. Okay, we're good. Okay. Okay. So all right. Sorry, just to take a step back. Um yeah, so this is a proposed facade sign for 108 Mamaroneck Avenue, Yoga Spark. Um, the, the sign, again, was, was um, down at the other end of Mamaroneck <laughs> Avenue. Uh, they're moving down to 108 Mamaroneck Avenue. Uh, so these are some of the neighboring properties. So the sign, uh, again, it, it's a push through acrylic sign measuring eight feet across by two feet tall. Uh, Ten, the letters themselves are just under 11 inches and then the, the you know kind of that flame uh, element in the word yoga uh, reaches uh, 17.8 inches. Uh, the face of the sign is black with uh, white and red copy. So again, it's, it's stuff that's been approved before so nothing out of the ordinary there. Um, so we'd like this is how uh, we'd like to pl place it uh, right of center over the uh, is, you know, centered over the two windows uh, on the right hand side of the property as you're looking at it from the street. Um, you know, mostly because the, the, the tree when it's in full bloom completely obscures the sign. Um, so uh, that, that, that's, that's really the main reason. And also, you know, off center, it, 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 we think is, is kind of an interesting look. Okay. Is this the same exact sign or a new sign that looks like it? No, it's the same exact sign. Okay, and what happens? What is going? What's what's behind the sign? Uh, there was this, you know, whatever was there in the word and the sign that said "Be knows spell." So what's what's there now? Right um, now, the way it looks now is uh, this: just the the old lettering from uh, Pino's Palace. So nothing is going to change. The facade is going to stay the same. Well, well, um, there's a series of there's some white panels or something I, I don't know what they are if they're sign or if they're you know I, I don't know what's they, what's the substrate there yeah it looks like they're yeah they're, they're um like a sign band with 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 uh, a couple of panels which I believe they're 31 inches tall and if I had to guess probably six or so feet across okay so those are those are panels that, that are applied to the building and your sign will be applied over them correct Okay, so go back down to your sign, if you would. Okay, so your sign is just straddling two of them, and the other two are just plain panels. They will we'll just re revert to being plain white panels, correct. Okay, and there's no holes or anything in these panels from the, the Pino's pallet, pallet sign, or if there well, is? Well, they'll be filled. If, I, I believe those are stud-mounted letters, so when those come out, um, those will be filled and painted over. Okay. All right. Anybody else have any questions, comments, anything? 
No. No. Okay. Um, anybody in the audience? No raised hands. All right. There being no questions or comments, does somebody want to make a motion to vote? I motion. No, I second that. There you go. Eva, okay, you Andrew. It's you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, uh, I lost my. Okay, so uh, voting then, uh, Cindy. Okay, you're nodding your head, I guess. I guess. Yes, okay. yes. Larry. Having voted for the sign when it was first uh, originally designed, it's nice to see a new home for it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Andrew? Yes. Okay, um, and uh, Yvonne? Yes. And I'm good too. Okay, very good, thank you. Welcome to- Thank you very much. Spot. Thank you very well, thank much, you. It. Take care. Thank you. Okay. All right, next up then is um, 660 Mamaronek Avenue. I don't see him. All right. Is anyone here for Precision Motor Works? Oh, wait, I, I just saw him somewhere. There's like 30 people in here, this is crazy. There he goes. Uh -oh. All right, Daniel. I'm promoting him, but he's not moving. There he goes. How's now? Okay. So we can't so see you. We hear you, but uh, we don't see uh, anything. Let me see. Uh, start video. Let's see. There, hey. Now we see you. Good. There we go. Happy soon to be Christmas. I know we've all deserve it. So long story short, it was enthusiastic auto group, which we did approve prior to the storm that came in. The original owner left that building and rented it out to a new auto body dealership or excuse me, auto body auto works called precision um, auto works and the actual material is the same it's a Sintra and we're not seeing any images again just you you're not uh, sharing a picture of it if you're intending to let me bring it up as we speak can you guys see my desktop no we just see you. okay so let me see how do I uh screen there so that, uh, yeah now we see your desktop okay. so they are doing um i i made it very simple we're doing the same type of sign which is a Sintra one inch thick white letters um and a uh, and red letters that fit in the exact same location as enthusiastic auto works. So basically, it literally is the same material, the same color, but it's a different name for the new business that is going in there. Even the same typeface, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, the typeface is a little different, but it's it, it's you know it, it's nothing major, but it it's uh, still very just clean and legible. Okay. All right. Any is it comment? the 
Is it going to be center, like between the two windows on the second floor? Yes, absolutely. Everything is centered and it's sized uh, proportion. So the most important okay. thing is that I will give it a fresh coat of paint. And once I put the pattern up, it will be centered the same way uh, as Enthusiastic Auto Group was. Oh, okay. Okay. Centering is the most important for any sign. That mm -hmm. is the case. Yeah, I know there are other openings down below, but I guess it's, since you have those two windows, the windows are symmetrical on the Correct. facade. Yeah, it will look better. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Anyone else have a question? Comment? Okay. Then uh, anybody from the audience? No hands raised. Okay. Uh, motion to vote. I have motion. Okay. And Larry seconded it. Okay. Um, Yvonne? Yes. Larry? Yes. Andrew? Yes. Cindy? Yes. And I'm also good. Okay. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Have a happy and healthy holiday, and I will see you guys with a new sign in the new year. Okay. Right. Look, Thank look, you. For, look forward to it. Thank you. Yeah. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, you too. Bye. Okay. Um, so next one is uh, 311 Mamaronic Avenue. Jose, you muted. Sorry. Okay. You yep. Uh, well, we knew what it is, so I, I <laughs> we're learning as we go along. Okay. Um, but I've also noticed in the meeting right before us, they were uploading their videos. I didn't do any of that. I have it. I can. I can. I'll do it then. Oh, because I, I just made copies. I wasn't sure that I. Fine, I I'm going to share my screen then. Okay. Yeah, okay. most most people have it on their uh, computer, the same one they're using for the Zoom, and just share their screen with it. But there it is. Yeah, that, I'm new to the Zoom. I'm new to. Every, I'm usually the guy on the road. <laughs> <laughs> this is the correct place, right? Yes, that's it. Three eleven. There, um, just as is proposed, the channel letters. 11 inch. Okay. Uh, could you could you introduce yourself, by the way? Or are you I'm sorry. I'm, I, we started right about. I'm Jose Casher from Neptune Science. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. Yeah. And uh, as we see, that's uh, what I proposed there as is written. It's their channel letters, illuminated channel letters, 11 inches high, uh, four inch return is red, black trim. And I just made it to, to the specs of what was allowed on that, on that avenue. If I may ask, is this the former balloon store? Yes, it is. And is there everything, any- I, I put the black behind it, but everything right now is painted black. And but, is, will, not that it matters, but to us it does. Will the building, will the purple be repainted another color? Yes. the the. Like I said, the um the black that's there now, I put behind it, but they have painted the whole, everything black. All that purple is black okay. now. Can I ask a question? Okay. Sure. Which is, it's not really to scale, right? Because the whole thing is 20 inches tall and the letters are 11 inches, which means that between here and here, you can see my mouse? Yeah, I see your mouse. You know, this is really four inches and this is really four inches. So, I mean, you even say it here, this is 10 foot four and this is 10 foot eight. 
right. so that's four inches. So the letters are really much bigger compared to the to the mm -hmm. the total bandwidth than you mm -hmm. have here. I'm just making it clear to the everyone else, right? Uh -huh. the, well, what about the width? So it says well, I can't quite read it to the bricks. It's eight eighteen feet ten, is it? Yeah, it's the whole storefront. Eight, eighteen ten. Mm -hmm. So the it should be the brick. It's like eight inches, right? Wouldn't excuse it be? Me. Excuse me. The brick. You mean the soldier course brick up above? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, but if it's standard, it would be about eight inches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, the, so, so that's what's a little confusing here, Jose, is that yeah. the length of it looks right, more or less, but the height of it is not right to scale. You see, if it's 20 inches and those are 11 inches, as, as Anders pointed out, then there would only be nine inches left, which is mm -hmm. roughly the, the width of a brick, not the length of a brick. Well, I'm not, I, went, I went to square footage that was allowed for the store frontage. So, no, I, I think, I think I'm not sure. you're missing our point. Yeah, the letters as drawn are not 11 inches. Oh, you're saying as far as my picture is concerned? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I, I, I didn't really scale. I scale it on the, I have a sectional drawing where I put everything to scale, but I did that drawing just so it, it was recognizable to what I was doing. They're, they are 11 inches, the letters. I'm looking to see if there's another drawing here that, that's how, no, that's across the street or something. That's, that's it right that's there. That's it. Right? That's it. It's just no letters. Yeah, on. that's the black. That's what. That's what it looks like. Uh -huh. now. Black. That looks right. more than twenty inches. I gotta say. Yeah, I think that that's probably what's going on. Is that twenty inches could be wrong? Go back to the first top uh -huh. one. Something's wrong here. Uh huh. Yeah, that's probably. Yeah, because the, the brick's eight inches. So yeah, I, I think that's probably what's wrong. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think so too. Because yeah, it, you know the the height not to exceed thirty, the, and they put they put 20 inches. So yeah, probably it's just that. No, but that's is not not correct. It looks like if it's 10 foot four, then 12 feet, then that's... Uh, uh, well, one, behind that wasn't, behind that black that I, that I put up there, it wasn't brick. Yeah. You, you yeah, we're just looking at the width of the door. This thing is as tall as the width of the door, which has got to be 36 inches probably. So... Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. It's, I've I've measured it three times. It's definitely not. Yeah. Something's wrong there. Go back to your other drawing, the pencil drawing there, Andrew. That's why. I, that's that's the reason why I had to make the letters so small, only eleven inches, just to give me the square footage allowed in that area of that space. That's that's eighteen ten by twenty inches. No, something's got to be wrong because where my mouse is is half the ten foot four, and that would be sixty two inches. So between here and here is sixty two inches. That is not twenty inches. That's much more than that. So anyway, all right. Well, look, I'm 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 going to throw something out. I don't know if you all agree with me, but. I, I think you know that the that the back the background is there and it is what it is. Well, as long we, as the letters are not higher than eleven inches, right? That's what I was going to. I would I would I I'm think sorry, sorry. be okay with it. Okay. Um, Even if he's saying the background is more than twenty inches, I would still leave the letters eleven inches. That would still put me in the square footage mm -hmm. that I would okay. hope to be in. So you center it in the space. Yes. Okay, so I think mm -hmm. if we stipulate that the letters are not higher than 11 inches and they're centered on the space, yeah. both vertically mm -hmm. and horizontally, that we, that we can let it go even though the drawing does not seem right somehow. Mm -hmm. it, they'll definitely stay 11 inches. <laughs> Chair, okay. this, is, this is Dennis, the building inspector. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, with, with the follow through with the, the dark area behind the lettering, you know, he can, that, that the whole building can be painted black in reality. Um, but uh, as for the lettering, if you do decide to vote on it and you're, as long as he stays with 11 inches, we can do the follow through as the building department to make sure it's copacetic. All right. Yep. Then mm -hmm. she went out. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I, I think that would be fine. Okay. Um, okay. Does, does anybody else have any questions or comments? Is everybody okay with that? Yeah, I'm trying to. Okay. Okay. Uh, so 11 inches high centered. Um, okay. Um, uh, motion to uh, vote then, I suppose. Is there audience? Any audience? No hands raised. Sorry, sorry about that. Okay. That's okay, thanks for reminding. Yeah, I'll make a motion. Second. Okay. And then, uh, so Cindy? Yes. Andrew? Yes. Yvonne? Yes. Larry? Yes. And I'm, and I'm good too. Um, then Jose, so as, as we said, with the stipulation, the letters limited. Hi. Centered horizontally and vertically. Yes, I appreciate it. Okay, no. And it definitely stay 11 inches. <laughs> Very good. Thank okay. you. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Thanks. I'm going to stay on top of all the projects just so we can go straight to it. Okay, to yeah. Hey, we're going to be here. It could be a long one, a lot of people tonight. There's a lot of people, so I just want to keep it moving. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Thank you, Andy. Okay, uh, 567, the Parkway. Who's here from Sun Power? There we go, Melissa. Okay, Melissa. You're, if, if, if you're, you're, if you're the mute. speaking, Melissa, you're muted. <laughs> I'm back. Okay. Hi. Hi. Hi, my name's Melissa Mitchell with SunPower Corporation, East Coast Operations Manager, and I'm here uh, to speak on behalf of 567, um, the Parkway. Uh, what we're proposing, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, there we go. Please let me know if you can see it. Yes. Awesome. So what we're proposing is a 15.54 kilowatt grid tied voltaic system, which is a solar system for a single family residential home. Um, we're going to be installing a total of 37 panels and they will be 420 kilowatts each. Um, the PV modules will take up on the roof roughly 757 square feet. Um, and on roof plane one, you'll see that there are 10 PV modules. Those are the ones that will be, yes. We're all, we can only see the yeah. uh, front page. You need to, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, there you yeah go. There. that's the one you want, I think. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, as you see here, there are no, um, from the actual V Parkway on the street, there at the front of the house, there are no pan, um, actual panels that's going to be on roof plane three, but the panels will be visible from the rear on roof plane number one. Um, mm -hmm. You'll be able to see 10 of those panels from the street, and I do have an image of what that will look like. The rest of the panels will be to the back of the home, not visible up from the street. Let me share my other screen for you so you could see just this uh, image of what it would look like from the street. Okay, put it full screen. Are you able to see that? Yes. Oh, awesome. Yeah. It's gonna look mm -hmm. like as you're walking down um, <laughs> the parkway, uh, you'll be able to see it just at that angle alone, um, the panels and the rest, as I stated, you will not be able to see, they won't be visible from the street facade. Those um, are the ones on the right side. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yes, sir. Okay. And that is what I'm proposing. I welcome any questions, please. <laughs> yes. If you go back to the, uh, roof plan showing the panels, please. 
Yes, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> I just wonder, I know this is in, in the back, but if you look at uh, the, yeah, the back portion of the roof where you have the majority of the panels. Yes. And you, you start at the very top and they come all very nice, you know, uh, right. in the same direction. Right. And then you have to rotate them. I was wondering if, what if you don't rotate them and, and, and line them up vertically as well okay. as the other, the other type? You know what I'm saying? Because yes. it looked like there was mm -hmm. enough, just, be, you know, it wouldn't look so chaotic. <laughs> I know, I know it's in the back, but still I think it needs to look good if, if it's an option. <laughs> Um, we can, I mean, just looking at it, I'm seeing here, if we took the three, okay, so starting from the bottom. Actually, one, two, three, There's four. four, four. Uh-huh, yeah. right. Yeah, I was wondering if you line right. up, you know, one, two, would that work? It I looks don't... like, it looks like the roof is cut back there. It's That's not as, bit, yeah. it's not right. as deep there. That's why they're rotated. Right. Because I'm looking. Well, Mm. Yeah, but if you look at the other roof, the one facing to the other the side neighbors, mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. seems to be the same distance if you put them. You know what I'm saying? I don't know yeah, if this is absolutely But those accurate. are also uh, turned. Yeah. There's also what? Those turned. are rotated as well. I, I think what Andrew is surmising, and maybe you could zoom in on that picture, Melissa. Yeah, sure. right where it says roof one, there's a cutback. Yeah, same. Exactly. Yeah, I saw that. But yeah, I so it looks like if you rotate it, you might be getting too close to the edge. Right. Well, that's the question. That's the question. That that's why I ask. I I honestly, based on my designers, um, I feel that even though it may look a little chaotic this was the better route to go. But if you like us to move, and I say that because yes, I feel like there is gonna limit access um, to the edge of the roof plane. But if you like, I mean, I, I can always go back to the designer and see if possibly we can move up the panels and, and align them another way. But I just think it may be a little conflicting. Um, yeah, you're going to have another problem with that vent. So there, you're going right. to, have to, yeah. Because there's a lot no. of vents on that roof. Usually it's not so many vents, but it's such a huge I jump. see one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see four, one close five. to the edge, yeah. right? When yeah. it says roof two, that, that there's a, a vent. Yeah. But I, I mean, I'm saying if you move those panels back down and line, line them up with the other ones in the same direction, if it is possible, I don't, I, you know. Oh, I see what you're Based you're, on the drawing. Based on the drawing, it seems that it might work, but you know, it might not. Are you, are you su uh, suggesting, uh, Yvonne, that the that in roof, uh, I guess this is roof one, roof two, roof two, yeah, that the ones that are horizontally disposed be closer to the ridge line, and the ones that are vertically disposed be further down on the roof? Like on roof three? Like on roof three. Roof one. Roof, three. roof one. No. I, I I'm don't not think sure. I well, I'm not sure <laughs> what the roofs are labeled, but the, the one with the most panels on, one with the few panels. That, they call it, the one with oh, the, the panels called roof one. Roof right. One. Roof, I mean, roof one. one has horizontal ones near the top. Right. Yeah. Roof that's two true, has horizontal no ones near the bottom. Right. So I wasn't yeah. sure what you, if you were suggesting mm -hmm. that on roof two, that on the left side here, that you you might put the horizontal, are you, are you thinking to put the horizontal ones at the top, like on roof uh, one? Or is that what you're saying? Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, That's okay. not what I was saying. I was saying like, you know, the one that roof, it says roof two there. That's why I call it roof two. Mm -hmm. yeah. Call to yeah, the that's other. right. Right. But you're yeah. right. I just can't quite read yeah. it too well. I'm yeah. Just okay. Posting. Yeah. I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't have to, you know, otherwise. I was saying if you, there are one, two, three, four panels there. 
that are uh, running, you know, parallel or, to the right. to the roof edge. Mm -hmm. So uh, my question is this: it, What if you rotate those and have them oriented the same way as the other one, as the upper ones, and you put them, you know, one, two, three, four panels? I mean, so I, not eliminated. I I just wonder if it would look better. Yeah. And I think the concern is, if I may say this, Melissa, is okay. that since they are pivoted 90 degrees, they are too close to the roof edge. I think so. Right. Right. Because right. you have to have the setbacks. So the, the, right. you know. And I think that's why they were positioned the way they are. Right. Yes. That makes sense to me. So yes. what's, what is the setback for a roof edge? You said five inches? This should be three. Okay. So it looks like it would just be butting to it, but... Again, how do we look at that? Okay. Right. Chair board, this is Dennis, the building inspector. So um, complicated roof, you know, with all the vents popping through in many places. Mm -hmm. What is going to distance the clearance underneath the panels to the roof? I'm, I'm sorry, there was a little noise. I'm sorry. There's a lot of noise, unfortunately, on my side. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> uh, so what's what's the clearance from the rear of the panel to the roof? It's going to be the a standard three foot. No, so underneath underneath the panel to the roofing material itself. Mm. Yeah. I mean, so if, if would you like me? Detail, I'm guessing yeah. she doesn't have that dimension here. You know, okay. maybe it's on these plans. Perhaps you can point it out yeah. to me. Because I do yeah, have the plan set. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, right there. what is that? Figure one, uh, one point two. Yeah. It's, it's so six up. inches max. It shows. That's the bottom left hand side. Slow it up. Yeah. So it's figure one dash two. So you know the code does allow for clearance. Um, an allowing clearance of venting, plumbing fixtures, uh, pretty much plumbing vents underneath solar panels. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the, the board has a lot of questions, but perhaps, you know, um, tabling the application to lower them or cut those vents back. So I recommend that your, your design professional reads the New York State Code for the allowance clearance behind those panels, and you can probably put the panels directly over those vents when cutting them down. Some oh. solar companies choose not to do that, but mm -hmm. in, in most cases you're allowed uh, X amount of inches of the, mm. of the vent penetrating the roof. Right. And that is covered by the solar panels. Yeah. So then- I'm the, not, the I'm not sure that Yvonne was uh, bothered so much by the vents as, as by <laughs> the fact that uh, the uh, panels were arranged um, some of them horizontally and some of them vertically. Right, but if, if yeah, you went yeah. back to the drawing, you could see that if, if you did it like Dennis said, you could fill all those gaps with the panels that are horizontal. Exactly. Can we look at that drawing again, yeah. Melissa? Absolutely. Thanks. Right, so you could <laughs> fill four places. Thank you, uh -huh. that, that's exactly the point that I was making. So that, you know, that would, that would eliminate those four panels they that, are, uh, that are, working against the, the ladder there. Um, so yeah, if, if you wanna have a conversation with me tomorrow, um, you know, I can, I can find the section in the code for you as well to help you out. Um, my, my contact info is on the website. Okay. All right. Um, that's fine. Um, I don't think we'd wanna cut down or remove any vents um, to be pretty forward. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm welcome to having another conversation. Um, I mean, we, I don't, I don't mind going with um, Miss Yvonne's first option, if that is possible, to see if the design team would possibly like to move those panels um, and make them align with the ones on the left. Um, I mean, we just want to do what's simple and as better for the homeowner and of course, applicable to code and the standards that you all have for the village. Um, but we want to make it as seamless as possible, um, realistically. But well, you may find that the homeowner likes that idea if they knew that they could do that with the vent. I'll talk right. it over with Mr. Perry. Absolutely. 
if you could put them the other way, you could also probably get in another panel or two, which makes me suspect that they don't fit, but I guess uh, we can confirm that. Okay. So I guess the question that people are asking is, is it possible to rotate the horizontal panels on roof to 90 degrees? I believe it is possible. Hmm. It, it, prop, it, it looks like it's possible, especially looking at the upper half, that it may be, it may be feasible. But then again, I'm not a design professional and I would realistically like to talk that over with my team. I mean, if the, my thing, I, I understand like the concern, but also it's the rear of the house too. Yeah. And it's not visible from the street. So I wonder, um, I mean, is it, I can't make that decision, only the board do you have, can. Do you have anything that shows what, what it would be what it look like from the neighbors? Right, that's what I was wondering. I mean, there might, are there neighbors who will be looking at the panels? They won't, especially because the, the homeowner has such high hedges around the okay. home. Like you cannot see the next neighbor's roof. So really the only person mm. seeing the roof is us tonight. Um, the homeowner can't even really see these panels. And the inspector, if he gets on the roof to see it, like no <laughs> one else is gonna <laughs> to see, you know, um, too much. But, uh, go back to your photos a sec. That, that oh, this one? Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. You have some mm -hmm. other photos there that might. Uh... Oh, these photos are actually just what the house um, looks like from the front, from the street facade. Well, it gives okay. you an idea of, of the, the story. Sure, sure. Whatever you guys want to look at. I'm, yes. Now, that's a fairly stiff pe pe pitched roof on the front. But it looks like there's not much going on behind it, huh? It's no, it's not. Can you please go back to the plan itself? Yes, sir. I sure can. All right. So the back of the roof does not is just one uh, pitch. The front of it has a pitch, and then it has a secondary one. You said the back only has the one. Okay. Yes. Do you have an aerial or something? Go, go to the first page. I think there was a site plan. Sure. Let me move this and right here. And let me zoom out so you could see it. We'll zoom over, slide over, don't, so it stays big. Yeah. Zoom in as much as you can on the site plan, on the image, satellite image. Yeah. Oh, sure. Oh, sorry. Okay, there we go. Okay, and zooming in and then moving over. Would you like me to zoom in a little more? No, that's that's good. Okay. 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 So yeah, there's so there's there's hedges and then there's you can't really see what happens next, but it looks like it's set back a fair ways from the neighbor. All right. Just seeing. Um, somebody's uh, asking a question from the audience too. Oh, is that person here? I assume. I mean, I don't know if, who John Leitner is as far as this project is well, concerned. Yeah, he says, will the house on Alder Road behind this house be able to see the panels? No. Well. All right, well, guys, uh, I my, think my, my opinion is we it's fine. I'm going to just tell you right now, 
It's yeah, in the back I'm, of the house. I'm okay with it too. I think it's in the back of the house and it's not architecturally visible to this to, to anyone. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I I think uh, I I tend to agree, Andrew. But I think that, and I don't know what Cindy thinks. Yvonne and Larry sound, seemed like they might have had some questions about it. So, well, I think of course it would be great if they could be placed in the same direction. I suspect they couldn't have been, or they probably would have been. But due I, to I also am not sure it even back. is much more beautiful because of the way that they're laid out with the vents and things. But um, it's not I, a sort of block. If no, but if nobody is going to be seeing them, I'm I'm okay with it too. There's another house behind this one, or how does yes, that work? Apparently. There is, but we can't see it. There's mm -hmm. like, like there's hedges in the back, and I, I can't see the other house. Hmm. Let me see. Okay. All right. Well, I'm I'm gonna say let's let's go ahead and and vote on it. Um, and... I'll make a motion. I'm sorry. I'll make a motion. Somebody has to second it. I'll second. <laughs> okay. Um, is, uh, Larry, you can vote first. I'm in favor. Andrew? I'm in favor. Cindy? Yeah. Yvonne? Uh, no, just because I would like to see if, you know, All right. I just wanted to check that, the okay. option of, you know, yeah. Yeah, I think I'm orienting okay. the panels. Okay. okay. I understand, but I, I think I'm okay with it too. I think that, uh, okay. you know, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm just not even convinced that turning a music is really going to make it look much better. And it's, I don't know that it's worth holding them up for that. So I'm, I I'm, think I'm okay with it. Okay. So we'll give you a, a four to one Melissa and you're good to go. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and now we have uh, one, th well, eleven twelve Keeler Avenue. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, who am I looking for? Somebody named Max Smith who says he's here. Um, yes, he's got his hand raised. I'm guessing he's the homeowner. Joe, you're muted. Hi, guys. How are you tonight? Hello. Good. How are you? Wonderful. Uh, my name is Max Smith. I'm the, the regional sales manager from Sunrun, and uh, this is Joe Terracone. He's the um, he's the sales rep who's working with uh, with Zulma on her uh, solar project. And I'd like to show you what we're proposing. I'll, I'll go ahead and share my screen. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay. Yes. So we're proposing 18, uh, 18 modules uh, on two different roof planes. They're JA solar panels. Uh, they are black on black. Um, here's a shot of the array. Um, so we have on the southwest side, we have 15 panels and then three panels on the northeast. Um, and I have a, a rendering for you as well. So here's, here's an aerial view on the left. Um, and then here's the view from, from the east and then the view from the west. Okay. Um, and they're all, they're all facing the same direction. And actually I did wanna, I think I did raise my hand earlier on the earlier project. I wanted to, to, to help hopefully clarify just, just for the other one. I, I know those designers would not have put them in different directions if they, if they could avoid it. Um, our designers do the same thing. We always like to keep it in the same direction if we if we absolutely can. Um, but if it's a matter of space constraints, we'll 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 keep it so that way we can generate the power for the customer. 
Okay. So why in this case do you have both sides different? I don't know. The, these, are, these are all in the same direction. They're all okay. horizontal. I see, I see, okay, Fair, forgive me. All right. I don't know. Uh, honestly, I think it looks pretty straightforward. Where you could uh, this this house is small and, and urban looking, kind of. Where is the uh, mechanical equipment? Uh, so the equipment is. Let me pull that up. Let's see. So the uh, the equipment will be on the side of the home, right here to the right. Mm -hmm. So this is Keeler Ave, um, and we're looking at the house. It will be on kind of like on this other side here by the so driveway there the okay. driveway right here mm -hmm. okay looks like that's where their power comes into you can see there yeah, yeah we, we always like to put yeah whenever possible we like to put the equipment right right next to where the meter is right when the power comes into the house that's also right usually where the the main electric panel is on the other side mm -hmm. hey i have a question for you about that um since that's a driveway if that meter wasn't grandfathered before, does it now require some sort of um, barrier? Um, only, uh, typically, no. They don't. They don't require any type of barrier. Um, if there was any type of space constraints, we wouldn't be putting it there in the first place. So, typically, what we would do is we would find a, a better location for it, um, and we would run run the conduit through from the other side of the house wherever it needs to go. All right. Okay, any other comments or questions? Anybody nope. in the audience? Motion to vote. I motion. Okay, uh, Larry raised his hand. So Larry voted and uh, Elon seconded. Okay, so uh, Andrew? I approve. Okay, Ivan? Yes. Larry? Yes. Cindy? Yes. And I'm good too. All right. Very good. Thank you all. Have a great evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The next one up then is uh, 219 Maple Avenue. Okay, Aaron. Hey guys, um, my name is Aaron. I'm the New York Operations Lead for Momentum Solar, uh, proposing uh, 20 panels at 219 Maple Avenue. So I'm going to share my screen real quick. So uh, this is going to be the house. Uh, there's going to be three panels in the front, uh, eight on one side and nine on the other side. So I can show you a picture of the house with the panels on. Uh, you won't be able to see the panels from the front. Uh, as it's like almost a flat roof um, and it's not visible from the street. So this is the aerial view as well. Yeah, those show more panels on the left on the, uh, uh, it looks like the render shows 20 panels, but the drawing shows 19. So, because that side, the um, if you're looking at the facade, the left side shows, Less, less number of panels. It shows eight, I believe. Right? Right. So the upper portion, yeah, I think you're missing one panel. No, I think there's I something that's protruding from the roof right there, right? Right here? No, no, no. No. You're that's just saying the rendering is different than the drawing? Yeah. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Which one yeah, is the um, right one? The, it should be based off of this one. There might be a rendering issue. Uh, it should be based off of this. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. But then these are 19. And it says that you have 20. Just to clarify that. It should be 20. I don't know if there's a design issue. There should be 20 no. here, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah. The rendering is 20. Yeah, it should be this one then. But the drawing? Okay. 
Okay. Yes. The drawing is incorrect then. On yeah. It's 20 that panels. Portion. Can you okay. go back to the drawing? Because ultimately we kind of got to stamp this, so it needs to be. Mm -hmm. Looks yeah. like it was missing a panel on this right. uh, top roof. Yeah, well, it's centered, so you split. They had two panels yeah, on, yeah. The, on the third row. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Uh, while we ponder that, I'm, I was a little confused about how, if you look at the picture, there's a steep mansard roof. And I'm not kind of sure where this all is relative to the mansard. Yeah, me too. I have the same question. <laughs> if you look at this, there's like, yes. where's the roof that we're talking about here? It's the one yeah. on top of these windows uh, right here. So uh, those windows don't kind of, that, that all doesn't sort of show on the plan anywhere or on the render. Right. right. So they wouldn't be visible? That is confusing to me too. No, they will be almost flat on the roof. Yeah. Really? Oh, it's almost flat, that portion of the roof? Yeah. So uh, the render is tilt. also. Well, the drawing doesn't, the drawing is, is not very tilt well is, done. Uh, it doesn't show the mansard. It doesn't have the right number of panels. Other than that, it's great. It tilts 13 <laughs> degrees. <so. laughs> I'm going to have to talk to my designers over there. <laughs> yeah. You know, that, yeah, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't show those, all those uh, cupolas or anything, like, where are they? Um, yeah. Yes, confusing. You know, if you look at the, at the picture, there's a lot of uh, cupolas, it's like on the mansard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I don't yeah, see where that flat roof is. And, yeah, see those? So... Yeah, I've got, what I'm wanting to make sure of, of course, is that the, root, the panels are not there between the cupolas. No, no. It doesn't look <laughs> like yeah. Huh. Well, yeah, not clear. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's just focusing on the roof above that. Yeah. I, I believe that fun. that's what it is. It's, it's, uh, it would be nice if somebody had, had drawn it that way um because it's uh i don't see how else it could be done now yeah. well it's because they're not architects it's, it's a very inaccurate drawing yeah all right i mean Okay, now where on here does it say the 20 panels? Uh, it will be on the right side right here. Uh, on every page says 20 panels. Okay. Mm. Yeah. I can't see. Yeah, you're gonna have to tell whoever did that drawing, you should get no candy for a day. <laughs> no, green, no green spherical candy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, I don't know how everybody feel comfortable with it, that it's like up on the flat part of the roof above the mansards, hopefully, and that there's uh, a num the num 20 panels and not 19 panels and that they're arranged like on the rendering and not on the drawing. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that means that uh, that hip roof toward the facade, so the, the street, that's what he's saying that it's flat. And it's behind the uh, mansur. Yeah, it's right here. It's flat. So you don't see those panels. Is that what you're saying? No. Yeah, you won't be able to see them. And the house is tall, right? Okay. Yeah, I think I looked at the. Uh, I went to uh, you know Google Maps or something and looked at it, and I think you can see that there is a a roof that looks like the one on the drawing, but it it starts at you know, where they see that white edge there at the top, it sort of starts mm -hmm. there and, and goes back and up from there. Mm. It's, it's just not very clearly presented. Okay. Right. Okay. Anyway, so it's a little bit, right. a little mm -hmm. bit fuzzy wuzzy, but if uh, people are okay with it, I mean, the main thing we're hanging our hat on, I guess, is that it's up high and you can't see them. Um, right. Uh-huh. And yeah. I'll ask you too where the mechanical equipment is. Equipment's on the 
right side of the house, intellectual equipment. Okay. And so that's that's the right side of the house. Okay, and right in the back. So mm -hmm. um where's the street? I I, I'm, I think the, is it, are you um, sure that's not the side. front of the house? It's the front. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the front is here. Yeah, I mean, the, front, the front's on the left, so that would be the left maple. side of the house. No. Yeah. He said the right side in the back, but I think it's the left side in the front. I think it's huh? mm -hmm. Okay, and the driveway is there. Again, it's by the driveway. And Dennis, yeah. that's okay, code-wise, putting there by the driveway. I know sometimes you've been concerned about that. Uh, well, my concern is that the, the drawing doesn't match what you're voting on. That's actually my biggest concern is that yeah. there's a lot of- I can do for you as I can submit uh, revised designs for you guys. Yeah, if you yeah I think- I think yes, because we have to stamp it and the building inspector has to approve what we've stamped. I think that probably yeah. we should ask that you provide an accurate drawing that has, that shows the correct number of panels, where they'll be, and also, you know, gives an indication that if this is on an upper part of the roof above the mansard, that you, you know, you, you, you show that, that, you know. Okay, yeah. That this so, is uh, not. If there's no other issues, I could resubmit designs. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if this is something you could do or not, but doing a side elevation so that we see the front of the house, the mansard roof, and then the angle to the roof itself. All right. That would, I think, really tell the story you're trying to have us understand. Yeah, right it would now, be good, but so far, I don't think I've ever seen a, uh, a solar panel person draw an elevation. I know. That's why I'm saying if possible. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I noticed I phrased it that way. <laughs> Yeah, I think we just, I think we just need it. I think we understand what's happening, but since we got it, this has to be stamped, and the building inspectors got to inspect it. It's you, we need to stamp something that shows what's actually going to be there. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can drop them off tomorrow. So okay. are we? And you understand we, what we, we're saying? We you should be able to see if you look at it from above. You should see the tops of those cupolas, for example. Yeah, I understand. Okay. All right. So and more do we have more plan at least. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we have to wait to vote or can we vote with that? Exception? Well, that's a good question. Can we, we can we vote uh, stipulated on getting uh, drawings to stamp or uh, do we need to see it again? Um, I think that provided that it, everything is as you said, probably it's okay if we just get what we can stamp. Um, but I mean, I, I guess then it would be necessary to make a judgment that it's as you've said. Is that okay, Dennis, you think? Where's the attorney when we need them, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I would I would hold on everything until you get the rendering okay. that is actually going to be what's there. Instead of All right, so let's it. let's let's let it go with this then, and uh, Aaron. So what we're saying is, we think it's probably okay, but you know we just need to have a better presentation. We need to be able to have see what's going on and have the right number of panels and 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 so forth. Gotcha. Okay, and then you'll have to come back, but you know. It, it's probably fine. We just can't really tell and we can't really stamp it. And, you know, it's just not, not correctly drawn. Okay, sounds good. We'll okay. see you next time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay. All right, that brings us up to 818. Walton.
Hi, good evening, board. Um, good evening. Good evening. Um, my name is Alex Martin. I'm with Castleman Solar. Um, just get my screen sharing set up. Um, now I'm here to propose uh, a <clears throat> roof mounted PV system um, for residential use and consumption on site. Uh, we've got uh, 19 panels on here. Uh, it's gonna take up about uh, just a little over 20 feet, 21.42 square feet of the roof. Um, the roof itself, um, and I know that it's been uh, mentioned, there is a, a mix of orientation here uh, that we needed to, um, that our designer needed to go by uh, because it's not, uh, it would be less practical for us to install in between the skylights for proper uh, roof access as well as uh, abiding by the, uh, the fire safety setbacks. Um, we uh, also uh, could not put a panel uh, where my cursor is over to the, uh, to have clearance with this chimney right here, which is why that this is a, a standalone panel. Uh, um, mm -hmm. So the, the roof planes themselves on the front side, on the Walton Ave side are um, relatively shallow. The, this one, this mm -hmm. first roof is seven inches, or sorry, uh, seven degree tilt. Um, and then the upper roof plane is a 35 degree tilt. I've got a, a photo reference for uh, standing height at the street, um, just showing that that uh, the the visibility of that roof plane is very low from a pedestrian and public level. Um, so there there shouldn't be any uh, public view of the panels. The the side yard, this uh, the right side yard in this photo is. Um, fully screened by bamboo to the neighbor. Um, and there is, there is uh, some vegetative screening on the left side neighbor as well. Um, and the back side of the house, there's uh, an embankment that is, um, it's completely uh, screened vegetation wise from the back side of the, the property as well. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's uh, yes. Right, so those Cindy. are two skylights, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, Cindy, I think you were saying that you think you can, you could, you can see the rear. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can. I happen to be the rear, and oh, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> the proof is in the pudding. Uh, my. Mm -hmm. My bedroom does look directly onto the back of the roof. Mm. And so even though all of those trees are there, they're sparse and you can still definitely see right through them. And I don't know, I would say the orientation, I don't know, is there any way to leave off the two that are running the other direction? Um, I would say- Because it is the north, it's the north. So I'm wondering how much of a benefit is there. It would be, let's see what these panels are. They're 435 watt panels. So we'd be taking um, 890 watts out of the system size, um, which could, it would it would definitely make a sizable impact on the the lifetime production as well as the an, or even within the annual production of the the system to be sized for um, the homeowner's uh, consumption needs. Let's, let's take a look at some of the other drawings you have here. I think you've got some renderings and things. Is that, I, like, it's hard to read that particular. Yeah, that one, one is 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 a, a bit. Okay, there, there, for example. Oh, there's elevations though, Larry. Yeah, yeah. 
you know. <laughs> How about that, right? <laughs> yes, I like that. that. So it does happen. Okay, so uh, good. Well, so I mean, it, it is true that I believe, I mean, I walk on the front of Walton all the time. I don't believe that those will be very visible because of the plane of the roof and where it is for the pedestrians. Um, maybe the house is across the street when folks are in their upper levels, I believe it will be visible for them, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if any of the neighbors are, are calling in or anything, but I know that for me, I do look down on it. It's a very lovely roof to look down on right now. It's a brand new roof that's just been installed and the skylights are lovely. And I just wonder if it will look confusing to have the skylights and all of the panels and the two panels running in the other direction. Hmm. Alexander, you just said again, I think you said it, but just to confirm. Hmm. Yeah, the one, uh, there's one, one, one panel on the right that said yeah. you could not put another one. There's no clearance, Un right? Unfortunately, because no, there, there wouldn't be right. enough clearance to the chimney. Okay, because in that case, yeah, you could move one and maybe eliminate the other one, but yeah. Okay. I, I do agree. I definitely see that, uh, that perspective. And yeah. I, I had, I had um, initiated that conversation with the engineer before, because when I was looking at the plan, because um, I knew that that would be, um, yeah, a lone panel is, is obviously very uh, suspect, right. I would say. Um, sure. mm. yeah, but that okay. one I think you're not so worried about because it's not so visible. It's, it's, it would be nice if something nicer could be done here. Um, On this back side? Yeah. So can one be put placed between the two skylights? I had talked with the engineer about that. They had brought up that they they didn't think that it would be good for the access to the roof, as well as some structural concerns for putting well, it. Structural on the concerns is important. Access is is by the ridge line. Mm -hmm. um, but because yeah, they would have they would have egress up this fire pathway. Um, yeah, I was, for what I had been told that, uh, that for the, uh, for this design that they had shied away from there to try to keep the panels from being separated um, as well, visually on the backside. Um, yeah, even if you just had one panel centered, it would be better than, you know, that right. weird kind of, it's a little bit, you know, it's sloppy. It just kind of doesn't line up. It just suits off the edge there, you know. And the roof has so many planes, different planes already, that it adds yeah. to a little bit of that <laughs> confusion. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I agree that it would, I don't know what you meant by access so much as if it were in between the skylights, what, what did that mean? The access would be um, access to the, um, if any, uh, if any work would needed to be done regarding those skylights or if there was a need to but it, they would have this. They would have this access regardless of the fire lane. But that was um, something that the that I should have elaborated more with the design engineer on that. Um, I can, yeah, because if we were able to put that panel, if we were able to put that panel there, it would it would. Um, you know, lower the uh, the loss of that panel by, or the at least so that we wouldn't lose both of those panels. Um, mm -hmm. You know, to keep it a. Uh, you could, you could also put go go to the other drawing, the one that the yeah we could if you there's those two if you if you took one of those and centered the other one on the mm -hmm. three, 
Mm -hmm. I don't know. You could do that, maybe. I don't know. It's not probably. Well, I, think, I think a six to one half dozen of the other. I agree. Half. I agree. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I wonder if there's um, Cindy. It's would there for that view on the back side of the home. Um, I'm not uh, familiar with the uh, in total of the ground because I had only been able to um, look through the survey photos and they hadn't taken any detailed photos of that um, of that embankment back there. Is would there be any possibility to be able to screen it all from the backside? You know, that's interesting you say that because that would be where I would go next. I would wonder if they would be willing on their side to add some more trees. They're going to have to be pretty tall. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, they won't be tall for a while. Yeah. Probably. But I would definitely love it if there could be some more screening. Mm -hmm. I, my, in the perfect world, I would love to see one panel, drop a panel, put one in between the skylights and add more screening. But I don't know, what does everyone else think? I, I think, it, to me, it's fine. I don't mm -hmm. live there, to me, it's fine. To me, it's the yeah. same thing as, as the other house. Right, you know, it makes me think of a point, like you really don't ever know who is living in, in the sec who's in the second story looking down on these panels and it, mm -hmm. until it happens and you are that person, you don't really know. Well, see, that's why I think it's important. Yvonne, I know, I know. People say it's the back, but there's people in the back. Right? And, if they're, and the so, problem is if you're on a second floor, or even if you're on a higher, more attic -y type floor, you don't know. You can see a lot. I guess I would tend to argue that it's more important that as you drive down the street that the whole community, you know, has a certain coherence and looks nice. And it's, you know, mm -hmm. and the, you know, kind of individual rear kind of things. Um, personally, um, I put much I see more both, weight both on the sides. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people see the front, a couple of people see the back, you know? Yeah, true. Yeah. I, well, we could either vote on it or we could ask him to go back and fool with it and see if he can come up with something better. What do people think? I'm gonna leave it up to y'all. <laughs> uh, if they could remove those two. Pads. All right, the homeowner is chatting, so I'm yeah. going to bring okay. them in all right willing to add the screening can yeah hi silas and fernanda <laughs> hello silas <laughs> except i can't find them now what's their name silas, silas. all right silas i'm going to bring you on now i lost him is he on he was there. All right, here we go again. All right, Silas. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mama, Mama, you on? There's Silas' picture. All right, Silas is muted. I don't see the picture, really. Is it, there is what a picture of him, but he's muted. There you go. There Hi. Is. Hello. Oh. Hi, how are you? Hello. Thank you for considering this. <laughs> um, so I can I can say that we'll be happy to visit the screening conversation um, uh, when it comes time to the spring and it's it's better time to plant. I assume would that be a would that be okay? Yes, Silas. Thank you. Any any um interest in looking at putting the one of the, the panels in between the skylights? I actually asked that as well, Cindy, when we were doing the project and there um, they had a few concerns, both in terms of access and um, a few engineering concerns that I don't truly really understand, um, which is why we didn't do it. We were trying to prevent that from happening. 
um, but they they mentioned that that would not be um, something that the engineering team would be comfortable with, which is why we didn't move forward with it. Um, and then we tried to recalculate removing those panels, but that would significantly reduce the amount of uh, power that would be able to generate just based on how the sun runs um, through our roof. So we, we try to explore those, those options, but I'm happy to, I, I really enjoy the tree. So I'm happy to add those in. Let's uh, do, let's do screening. <laughs> let's do that. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, so I guess then are we in a position somebody want to motion to vote then? I'll make a motion. Well, I'll also make a motion. Oh, to, to have two people, different people motion? <laughs> I, I just heard Andrew. People motion. <laughs> Who motion? Andrew, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, I've so, taken it. Okay. Yeah. All right. All in favor. Uh, let's, let's do a roll call. Uh, let's see. Uh, Larry? In favor. Um, Andrew? Yes. Cindy? Yes. Yvonne? Yes. Okay. And, and I'm okay too. And uh, appreciate your working with your neighbors on the screening. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. Have thank you very evening. much, Lord. Thank you. you as well. Happy holidays. Likewise Happy holidays. to you. Thank you. Y'all too. Okay, uh, let's go then to uh, uh, 610 the Parkway, which is neither assigned nor a solar panel proposal. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Not, it's not even a swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> We're back on the parkway. Okay, and I yeah. see Mark, Mark Fritz is uh, on, although he's muted. And... Right. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can now. Okay. Um, good evening. Um, we can't see you or your screen, just... You cannot uh, see me. Why no, not? just Helvetica, you know, <laughs> typeface there. Yeah, I don't know why that's not... Uh, the camera's maybe blocked? No, it's not. All right. Uh, let me see. Oh, there I am. Let me see you. Okay. So you don't want another solar panel? <laughs> well, you, you put on solar panels if you want. <laughs> no, that's quite we all right. We love solar panels. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, so basically, basically the uh, the project uh, that we're doing at, at the house is we're actually doing an interior renovation that includes a new kitchen. As part of that, we're looking to do an outdoor space off the rear of the home um, and into the rear yard which is essentially- we, You know you're uh, not sharing your screen, right? Um, I can. Yeah. Let's- well, I, I didn't know if you were prepared to share, if you were talking and describing what you, we were seeing or if you thought we- uh, if you, I'm if gonna, I'm sharing it intro. right now. Hold on. Can, you, uh, can everybody see that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So basically, you know, we're doing the proposed deck to the rear yard. There's an existing screen porch in this area. And um, as we move through the, the drawings, you can, you can see the, uh, sorry about that. Slide you over. Oh, right there. like a rookie. Um, so essentially as we, we go through from uh, the new kitchen area. You can enter into the screen porch or you can enter onto an upper level deck. So essentially this is basically for circulation that would lead you down to the main level deck. At that deck, we're basically doing an outdoor kitchen with bar seating on this side. 
Uh, there'll be a guard on this side. Uh, the deck itself is essentially 15 to 16 inches maximum off of existing grade. Um, we have a built-in bench on one side and we're essentially basically uh, stepping down into the yard at the rear perimeter. As I go to the rear elevation, which you can see here, um, you know, so we're basically doing a, a pair of French doors and fixed French doors here from the kitchen. Uh, this is on the axis of the stairs, leads you down to the step, uh, uh, three steps down to the deck level. And obviously this is the outdoor kitchen area, uh, our bench in this area, and then two steps down to grade. Uh, so is this why you're on that picture? This is a, uh, like a, a wood or? Uh, a it's a Ipe deck, a Brazilian walnut. Um, Paulope goes under many names. Um, Ipe? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, when I look at this picture, one thing that's a little confusing to me is over by the chimney there, it appears that they, the, the deck level, if you will, is a little bit like cantilevered off of the right or something. And this, you see there's a space underneath it and on the left. It, yeah, the, if you, if you look way. at where the- if you I, look I'm not kind of clear on what's happening there. Okay, if you, essentially it's from the framing standpoint, um, if we were to look at the, uh, the structural plan, structural pen, you can see here that um, we have a beam that runs across and we basically have a, an 18 inch cantilever of that beam to pick up the edge of the deck um, and it sits on that uh, concrete tube. This way the tubes are concealed, you don't see them. Um, it creates a shadow line at the edge and uh, we, we support the deck off of that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what that essentially is. You might see a little bit of it in that elevation, but it would be one line uh, that's missing in that drawing. So if you uh, look at it from the side, you can see underneath the deck. Right? Yeah, but it's, uh, we're, we're essentially- you know, This is where you back. keep your raccoons and chipmunks and things. Exactly, yeah. you know, uh, we don't discriminate. <laughs> <laughs> And I was saying, I mean, we're literally eight inches off the uh, off of uh, the grade at that point. If you look at the section, okay, the mm -hmm. side yard, and that's a section cut through the deck. Okay. All right. Um, seems clear enough. Does anybody have any questions mm -hmm. or comments? Mm -hmm. No. Anybody, oh, anybody in the audience? All of Okay. Uh, motion to vote. Okay. Second. I second. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Yvonne? Yes. Andrew? Yes. Cindy? Yes. Larry? Yes. Okay, I'm good also. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Okay, have a good thank evening. Thank you. you Bye, now. Okay, next is uh, 1319 Raleigh Road. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. Can you see me? Yes, yes. we can. Mm -hmm. yes. My name is Karen Gomez from KTM Architect. Um, I'm representing the Kelly residents at 1319 Rally Road in Mamaroneck. My associate, Gina Landy, is also on this call representing KTM Architect. The okay. project scope is a deck and porch addition along with um, site improvements. I'm going to be sharing my screen now. Let me know if you can see it. 
Yes. Yep. So I'm going to be zooming in. Can you see the site plan? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'll be talking about the site plan. Um, we have three Pantone colors shown here. The dark gray signifies the boundary of the deck addition in the rear. The light gray shows the proposed porch below the deck. And then mm -hmm. the light tan Pantone represents bluestone pathways. Just to give you an orientation, um, this is a two-story residence and this is Rally Road. So all of the proposed work is occurring in the rear yard. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to be removing um, impervious surfaces like the- just, While you're on here, just uh, not to interrupt your flow, I'm sorry, but I, just while you're on this page, the, the back, seems to kind of get cut off there on the on the site plan is that what's what where is this property line or what's going on back there so the property line is right over here can you see my no, cursor yes that's, the dot is so, so there's okay. stuff there what there's so there's stuff behind the property line there is yes there is stuff behind the property line the, all the proposed work is happening within the setbacks and within okay. the buildable area Okay. So we meet the 25 minimum rear yard setback. So the but green the green part is not new or, or any, the green any is, back there exists? The green is existing and mm -hmm. it is to preserve and protect the approximate landscape location, which is partially within the property line. And then the other extents um, belongs to the Westchester County Commission. Okay. Okay, thank you. I wasn't clear on what was going on there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. The deck um, extends, the span is the full width of the house. And as mentioned, is also um, within the setbacks. We will be um, removing the existing concrete driveway and um, covering the existing proposed, the existing um, patio, which will be removing approximately 338 square feet um, of impervious. And our engineering team will be filing for a stormwater permit application. Um, and we aren't seeking any variance for the proposed work. So the next slide is a plan and render it views. This is um, drawing number two, the proposed deck floor plan. You can see the extent of the proposed deck is approximately 32 feet by 16 feet in length. Um, and it has direct access from the existing dining room through new sliding patio doors, which we see here in the elevation. Um, in addition to the scope, we are replacing two existing windows with new glazing and um, replacing an existing window in the second floor master bedroom. The existing uh, window trims are all white and the new proposed replacement windows will also be white. In regards to the material of the deck, we'll be using a kumaru wood species with the clear stain and um, Feeney rail cable rail systems. The existing house shingles will be painted white along with the existing foundation. So the only color that will be introduced here will majority be in the deck. The lower screened in porch will be painted white and will include um, mesh screening. Um, to the left of the deck, we have a privacy screen uh, made out of cedar wood. And to the right, we have the stairs that lead from the existing dining room through the new patio step, uh, patio doors down to the lower level. The following, hey, yes. Why the, I keep going, I'm sorry, you'll answer my question. Okay, mm -hmm. um, so the following um, screen, we have um, existing um, photos of the front yard the side yard, and this is the rear yard and another photo of the side um, northwest elevation. This is the existing conditions at the rear yard. We'll be replacing these windows with new glazing and this is the um, second floor master bedroom which will be expanding. And the deck will be 
proposed at this elevation of the existing first floor level. This is the existing patio, which will now include a screened in porch beneath the proposed deck. Thirteen Eleven Rally Road is the adjacent property to the left, and Thirteen Twenty Five Rally Road is the adjacent property to the right. And these properties are across the street. And then on the last sheet, we just have a material board, which includes the white trim replacement windows, a white patio um, sliding door, a basement white door replacement. This is an idea of what the screened in porch will look like in the color white. And this is the color of the Kumaru wood decking. We'll also be incorporating a porch drainage system that will be covered um, with a porch PVC ceiling. The railings that I mentioned earlier will look like this, and it's a TimberTech Feeney cable rail system, and the posts will be white. So instead of having these vertical balustrades, we'll be um, replacing that with the horizontal cable Feeney rails. We'll also mm -hmm. be including exterior lights on the deck. Um, again, the structure of the porch will be white, and this is what the walkway will be composed of. Exterior siding will also be painted white. Oh, okay. So you will mind? be you'll be changing the color of the siding. Yes, yeah, so the, the existing right. the existing siding is I'd say an almond color mm -hmm. in the family, and um, we'll be painting it white for okay. in the back as well as in the front. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so in that elevation number four, you see, I, do I see railing and screen wall? You see a cedar you privacy have screen, which is- Okay, but there's the no railing there. Then. No, just this, a serves okay. as, this serves as because both a barrier and a privacy screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but because it reads like there is a railing as well. I mean, it might just be the, the drawing, I don't know. It so on cable the, rail. Look, yeah. Uh-huh. If you see um, this elevation, we have the cedar wood privacy screen. Yeah. And then the Feeney rail wrapping in the front down the steps. Mm -hmm. And on yeah. this side elevation, you will see the privacy screen beyond. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I understand that. But it just it just looks like I see it's oh, okay. a little Maybe darker at the bottom seeing, half. Little... It looks like there's a railing in front of it. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. No, that's um, but, but she said there's not a railing there. It's yes. just the wall. Correct. Right. Right? Yep. Okay. Well, because it's labeled timber tech take cable rails. Here? From that elevation. Yeah, elevation number four, proposed northwest side elevation. I, I see the railing and the, and the and the see their privacy screen, both. Cedar privacy screen and the image that I have up, number four proposed Northwest, I have yeah. cedar privacy right. screen with the okay. which is six feet and then um, information. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, the drawings that were presented, I have what I'm looking at. Okay. You probably, um, you probably changed it. Uh, uh, yeah, or corrected it. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Okay, any other questions? Larry, did you get your question answered? Thank you, Bill. Why, uh, how close is the neighbor that you're incorporating the privacy screen? Mm. The privacy screen will be in the perimeter of um, the deck, which is approximately 7.5 feet away from the property line, still within the buildable area. And then how far is the other house from there? If you I, don't don't have, it, okay. I don't have it represented on this plan. Um, it's, it's, Maybe we could see the pictures again of the house. Right. There is an existing. So if we go to the existing site plan. Yeah, it seems to be there. Yeah. The house is on a, on a okay. diagonal. Okay, uh -huh. that makes sense then. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments? 
No, I think it looks nice. Anything? Yeah, it does look nice. It was a very Can nice. Can I ask a question about just a technical question? Sure. I see you have those drainage devices mm -hmm. underneath the deck, which obviously the deck has perforation right all the way across it. So you have those to keep all the water from going into your porch. How do you actually clean that? Because stuff gets into porches, into decks. So at the end, we will have a concealed gutter that will be um, projected into daylight. And um, we'll have our, our general contractor um, specify the installations as to how the maintenance is. I, I, I imagine it's, it's a partially removable from either the bottom or the top, uh, most likely I from see. the bottom. I see. I just think about that for my own house. <laughs> <laughs> Very convenient. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty interesting. Hi, this is the building inspector. Um, what's the uh, the clearance from the property line in the rear? We have so we have a twenty five foot rear yard setback. Okay, so that's that's enough, and that dotted line is the property line. This line is the property line, and then that the da the the dash dot dash line is the property line, and then the dash line is the buildable area. So from the property line to the buildable area, we have 25 feet. Okay. And um, during the plan review, we'll talk about the discharge for the accumulation of water from the deck. Yep. So during the, um, the permit filing, our engineering team will be filing a stormwater application for that. Okay. All right, great. And the stone wall that's there that was already pre-existing? This is an existing stone wall, yes. Um, the one that's beneath the deck will be replacing with the new modular retaining block. Now, there's an arrow there that says, I go, that says install new pavers over existing concrete patio. Yes, so here in the rear yard, um, you can see that there is a landing and the homeowners have um, decided that they wanted to do a paver installation directly over the concrete patio, just to give it a little bit of an update. Now that extends beyond the property line into presumably- Correct, they, they will, we will only be installing within our property line. So the pavers are gonna end and then it's not pavers? It will most likely, be Belgian blocked at the end to, to you know separate, distinguish the different um, mm. material. So there's no fence or anything there in the back, right? As of now, I can go to see it's open. See the picture. Mm -hmm. About ninety percent of those properties, um, their property is endless. It backs endless. all the way up. Yeah, there's no. The, uh, mm -hmm. I do not have a photo in in that okay. direction. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm Dennis Drogan. I'll be reaching out to the property owner um, during the plan review okay. to talk to him about the, that, that patio. Sure. Um, is that, that patio part of the, of the application to BAR? No. It's not. So right as of now, it's just the screened in porch, the deck, and then the site, site improvements. Okay. So the well, site improvements. Well, site improvements is pretty broad. When, yeah, so it's majority <laughs> of um, removing of the driveway, the patio um, walkway, and the painting of the house. This isn't this isn't this isn't like gonna make or break anything. This is going to be easily can be easily discussed with the homeowner if um, you know the building department recommends we don't install pavers. It's not a problem. Majority of the scope is within the mentioned. Okay. I, right. I have well, nothing else. I'm, I'm good with everything. Okay. Well, the, the scope is described, um, which I believe we understand does not include work to the landing that it, uh, extends beyond the property line. Um, can I have a, well, first, I guess, is there anyone in the audience? Uh, is that no? No. Okay. No. Uh, motion then? I have motion. Second. Second. Okay. Um, Larry? 
Yes, and I want to compliment the architect on an excellent presentation. Thank you, Larry. Andrew? I'm good, thank you. I agree. Okay, uh, Cindy? Yes. Yvonne? Yes, it looks I'm, nice. I'm, I'm good too. Okay, thank you. And... Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Good night. All right, uh, 1311 Franklin Avenue. Was this a note from Liam on the bottom? Is that Liam Winters? Uh, yeah. He's, he wants to recuse from the meeting tonight. I'm not sure what that means. Oh, yeah, I saw them. But Sorry. Yeah. Can, can, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. OK. Um, I was rushed to work on this project and submit it, and I realized there's a mistake that I can't present. So okay. I have well, to we, come back. I don't, I don't want to waste your time because it's going to come up. I appreciate up right that. Away. And you can certainly come back without any kind of prejudice or anything. We, you know, it's a big agenda <laughs> tonight anyway. We're you know, okay. happy to get the break. Um, so that's fine. Okay. So Bar Barbara, you'll work with him to get him on the next, next one. I Thank guess. you. Okay. See you yeah. next time. Okay. Okay, so next is 800 Rushmore Avenue. Mm -hmm. We set up, I'm gonna step away for a second myself here. Are they coming on? I promoted them. They're not moving now. All right, Mark and Mariella. Okay. Are we on or not yet? We hear you. Can you yes. see me? No, we no. can't see you. Hold on, hold on, because I'm new to this, sorry. <laughs> good to see you. Uh, good Mariela. evening. Uh, so you can see me now, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so uh, my name is Mark Gazda, Gazda Construction. Uh, there'll be my partner, Mariela Malizia here, Swiss Contemporary Design, talking soon. Um, now, most, I mean, I, this is the first time I do this on Zoom, so you have to forgive me, you know, I'm going to try to do my best. Um, <laughs> We could do probably a shared screen, but we have elevations, we have a model. So if you can see clearly behind me, I would prefer to do it that way. We can always switch it to shared screen if there are any questions. Are you okay with that? Or what do you think about this? Uh, yeah, okay. We can try that Let's if you- Let's try, yeah. Yeah, we can, we can start. And then we we'll get to any details on dimensions or setbacks or things like this. Obviously we could do that, but uh, presentations of our houses, you know, if just go on a, on a 2D dimension, it sometimes doesn't show the, the real thing and we have some colored stuff and, and, and things. So I'm gonna try to start like this. And then, um, so 800 Rushmore Avenue, good evening, Mark Gazda again, 800 Rushmore Avenue. Um, what we're proposing, uh, we bought this property, uh, it's a 0.7 acres, uh, very nice piece of property in, in Orienta area. We're proposing addition to the first, well, I mean, the house will stay, we're proposing a, uh, garage addition with some bedrooms in the back to the first floor, removing the roof and building new second floor over it with a deck behind. Uh, the actual garage, the new garage will go over existing driveway that's there. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna point that to you in a second. So, uh, well, this is a this is my partner's uh, rendering. I can't do these things, so uh, we'll go back to this in a second. Let's take that off. All right, so 
Uh, if you can see it clear, I hope you can. Hold on. Okay, go right there. So this is a little area here of uh, of the, the the neighborhood. So that's our property here, 800 Rushmore Avenue. It's already shown with the addition attached. So right now the house is the L that you see here without this, this part that's kind of over existing driveway. You see the other neighbors. Uh, we have a survey that was just, uh, you know, recently uh, updated. Um, so now let's switch that off. One second. Let's start off with this. Okay. Can you see? Can you see? Oh, okay. that's hard to see. It's faint. But it's a little out of focus as well. Yeah. Do all the panelists know how to pin that so they can it's the whole screen? Oh gosh. Yeah, I, I well, can see the whole my, screen, but yeah. What do you mean, Andrew? <laughs> well, if you if you if you go to his picture, yeah. And you go to the three dots, you have a chance to pin it, and that makes okay. them expand to the entire screen. Yeah. Pin, got it. Oh, yeah, cool. Thanks. Can you see it? Yeah, better, much better. But it's still, it's still faint. faint. It's still faint. Yes. Yeah, I think, Let's play with the I think, yeah, yeah, I think, Mark, it might be better if we see these in a shared screen, the, the detail of the plans and things. And if you showed us okay, the, so let me, so let the me see if and I can, renderings and things. So let me see if I can share the screen for now. So I'll walk you through okay. the site. And then when we go to elevations and things, then we can go back to the other way. How uh, do you want a remove pin? I'm like, oh boy, now you go so back to the large Marcus. Mark, I've tried to bring Mariella in six times and she's not oh, coming. No. I'll stay on the same screen as Mark. She she'll be right. Uh, you know she's coming in. <laughs> All right, let's see. On the same computer. Share. Barbara. So you see the screen now? Yes. 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 For the okay. Perfect. Okay. So you know the 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 rendering that you saw behind me at the beginning is what you see on the first page on the top, which is a, a 3D of you know what we're proposing. Mm -hmm. Mariela is going to get get into details with the design. So I'm just going to walk through you know the setbacks, whatever the size and all these things and then she'll take over. So then when you go to the next page, that's what I was showing. So yeah. 800 Rushmore Avenue, that's us. Um, you see the neighbors, you see where the houses are. Obviously we're complying with all the setbacks uh, more than enough. We have, you know, the property is pretty big for the area. So this is the addition here that goes over the driveway, existing driveway mm -hmm. that's there. Uh, when you go to the next page, that's where you see it. So existing house, that's the one that's not hatched. Mm -hmm. And then the addition is the one that's hatched. So we're proposing a, a, a garage addition with some bedroom office combination in the back and then a, a new deck in the back, whatever is there, there's existing little deck that's not even, was never actually probably legalized properly. That's gonna be removed. And then we uh, will build a second floor over the entire area. And then we'll, uh, you know, so, so that's, you're gonna see that later. Uh, when I go to the next page, we'll probably come back to it towards the end, but just to show you what our idea is, obviously this is a large property, 0.7 of an acres. Uh, neighbors are not that close. However, we wanna make sure that there's privacy from every angle. So we are actually planting uh, proposed 67 trees as of now. Mature trees anywhere between 16 and 22, 24 feet. I mean, they're all labeled on the plants. There might be small modifications and changes, but uh, it's, it's really pretty much what it's supposed to be. So our objective is to make sure that, I mean, the front of the property, the both sides, we want to leave it somewhat open because it looks nicer when you drive up Rushmore, you don't want to have big trees in your face, but then we want to make sure that on both sides of the property facing both neighbors, including the, the back of the property that already has some significant trees, but they are not screening enough because they are pines, we will be replanting mm -hmm. and changing the landscaping to the point that we propose enough privacy for everybody. Um, so as I'm going to move along, I mean, existing uh, floor plans, uh, nothing's happening to the basement. 
the addition will be all crawl space and slab on grade for the garage. Uh, first floor exterior walls will stay because they are all cement, which is a little unusual in this area. So we're going to keep in this very solid house. And then we'll just uh, work with the interior and change the openings of the windows as, as per uh, new design. And obviously the roof uh, and whatever attic is there is coming out that's going to be replaced. Existing elevations, I mean, you've probably seen the pictures. Again, mm -hmm. the main floor, the walls, most of it, the structures stay, the roof comes off. We'll work with it, um, you know, to change it to the new design. Um, and I'll just go through this page. I'll let Mariela take over from here. So this is the proposed foundation. So as you can see, the existing part stays. We have to eliminate a couple of windows in the, towards the back of the house because that's where the deck goes. So you wouldn't see anything to that. And then the new addition, which is on the right side of our existing driveway right now, it's a crawl space in the rear, which is under mm -hmm. bedrooms and hallway and mudroom and, and so on. Uh, for, you know, we need it for ducts and things like this and wires. And then the front portion, that's a garage, a slab on grade. Uh, as, as you know, typically done. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll let Mariela take over and she'll lead you through the floor plans, through the elevations. And I guess when we are kind of through this uh, shared screen, we can probably put up, try to put up the, the, the model, maybe some of the drawings that she had colored and stuff so you can see it better. So I'll, I'll let Mariela take over. Good evening, I'm Mariela. A little oh, shorter oh, than oh, Marek oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Yeah, not as tall as Mark, as I said. Um, so Mariela Malizia, we've been uh, building contemporary houses uh, in Orienta quite a bit. We like to do open floor plans and have a lot of uh, windows. That's, uh, I think, the beauty of um, more modern construction. It's the interaction with the, the exterior from the interior. And as Mark said, that property is large and is going to be private enough that that will be uh, not an issue. So as he said, the existing house has an L shape. Our new extension turns the L shape into a U shape which is going to have a large front concrete porch with a lot of uh, windows. In the back, the windows uh, face the wooden deck he's been talking about. So garages, guest room or office on the first floor and otherwise living spaces. On the second floor, the top of the garage is mostly a master suite with a large uh, master bathroom and some bedrooms and a common area that is right at the top of the staircase. You will see on the model better than on the elevations, um, the house has a few volumes that have different materials. And that was a little bit the, the idea and the game of this project. And the volumes, some of them are set back and leave room to some balconies. We always like to do um, a few balconies on the second floor that also give from the second floor that opportunity to step out. So here are the elevation and that's where I think I'm gonna try to, to switch to the model. No, can we, can yes. you just talk through the elevations first though? Sure, okay. So front elevation, it's very difficult to see on this one. I have some um, elevation that I colored that I, I can show you. Whatever mm -hmm. is um, uh, shown with the board, it's uh, gonna be cedar boards here mm -hmm. and here and the garage doors. Obviously you see the glasses. And then um, there is like a blade that sticks out in a stone finish, which now is already the chimney and we're just gonna extend it a little bit to make it like a statement. It's gonna be close to the entrance. It's gonna be like the end of our U shape that takes the entrance. So, so the is, 
Is this Rushmore facing Rushmore then? This is exactly facing Rushmore. Okay. So you saw the house is set back very far from Rushmore Avenue and already mm -hmm. has some screening. So yeah. being a U shape, all this um, wall of glass that takes the living room is actually going to be still completely private. Mm -hmm. And where's and the front? The where's the front door? It's right here. You see on the, the side. On the side. I see. Okay. And see, th this tower is actually um, a double height open space. I understand. With some Got windows, it. and that's what faces the staircase that goes from the first to the second floor. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the back of the house has um, those opening, the deck, and again, some stucco, white stucco, and some uh, cedar boards that uh, we can show you some samples of colors too. The side elevation, this is facing the right side of the house. It's mostly the garage windows and the side entrance. And this is the master bathroom that I've been talking mm -hmm. about. On the other side, all those openings are existing now. We're just going to enlarge them at the bottom to have more uh, glass, but it's already pretty open on, on this side. And upstairs, there's two bedrooms and two bathrooms. OK. Yeah, so the cedar boards. I'm sorry. No, yeah. The cedar boards in between the windows, are they yes. going to be painted the wood. same color as the rest? The, same I, as the wood. wood. Yes. Yes, okay, it's so, a composition. Okay. We, yeah. we often do that and I have examples where sometimes we join the windows between mm -hmm. them with some wood detail just to mm -hmm. interrupt the surface of stucco, which would be too much. Mm. Yeah, right. You have to know, uh, I'm gonna try to show you, I'm gonna- Yeah. Any, any, any questions on, on uh, the yeah. shared screen so far? Anything we have to go back to? You're anybody just, wants to call, mm -hmm. comment? Anybody from the neighborhood? Can, can you, you know, because just, we, we have colored the uh, elevation and the model. Why, why don't you show those and we can go back if we need Oh, yeah. Let, yeah. let me see if I know how to get out of this. <laughs> Color elevation is <laughs> nice. Hold Stop on. sharing. Stop, the Stop screen. share. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> so uh, hold on. Let, let's see. Uh, I'll, I'll, wow, can... look at that. <laughs> I'm going to show you go. Go, like the way you kind okay. of see it, but a little bit of an angle because that's when you see, like, for example, you see here the wood. Uh -huh. If you do straight mm -hmm. shot, you can't see it. It looks like it's all stuck on and white. But then, you know, if you turn it, you see all these volumes overlapping and, and, and coming together. And you can think of Yeah, right so, the curve, that's, a, that's a part. As we said, it's a, it's a game of different volume. This is the U shape I've been talking about that mm -hmm. takes the entrance, the door being oh, here. Okay, the door, okay. And then that's the statement I've been talking about with uh, some stone. This is just a pergola that's gonna cut the oh. more aggressive um, sunlight in the midday because south mm -hmm. is kind of here. In the south. Yeah. What is the what is the material of the pergola? It's wood. gonna be cedar, wood. all cedar wood. Everything. So, but basically, the, the combination is stucco and everything else that you see wood is cedar wood. So okay. all the except area, for the wall, blade wall, except yeah. for the stone. Yeah. So you got three. So you have the stucco, you have the wood, right. and you have the stone over here. And all of the wood is cedar that will be stained. Uh, you know, not too dark. Uh, when we've done couple dark ones before and and you know if you know our work you probably know but that's yeah. that's the composition throughout the house so anything you see between the windows all the wood is all the same pergola is going to match and even materials on the decks will match also it's all going to be the same wood. i can by the way slowly turn the model so you mm -hmm. can see mm -hmm. cool and then the back of the house again more interesting if it's a 3d Mm -hmm. I've never yeah. seen a model here on Zoom before. This is exciting. We, never, we, never, we, never, so we don't even know how, yeah. how it looks on this side. But you have read that a, a, a project like that is really difficult to read flat. Yeah, yeah. So that's nice. Um, can we show some color? So here we did also some uh, uh, hand renderings. Are they clear enough?
Yes. This is the back of the house. That's the back of the house. That's colored. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Right. So you know, you know we'll let, uh, you see again the deck down here. That's the that's the volume. That's all wood. Then that's another one, that one that's a wood. That's the back of the garage where the bedrooms are stacked. So it's all like overlapping. All these different volumes are overlapping. And, and then, you know, small little mm -hmm. balconies up there. And yeah. then the first one, first floor, which was up here already, you can also see, you know, it's it's all the same idea, yeah. the same materials. Now, mm -hmm. where we want to go back to is the, uh, the is the site plan just to show you know the size of the house? Can I can I just house? interrupt one second? Yeah, sure. We're we're not we're not involved at all with the gardening. So just okay. I mean, as a matter of time, can we just talk about the building? All right, okay, fine. So I mean, am I correct to the rest of the architectural committee? Like we're we not approving. Well, that's just to the extent of the screening. It's I think he was trying to talk about. Yeah, that's the only reason we yeah. were trying to put it up. All right, I mean, is that you? Are you are, like you don't want to show the house? I mean, I, I don't understand. We'll, we'll go back. We'll go back. <laughs> I, I no, I'm just saying is like I, I think I think there's a, you know there's neighbors. I think that you know that he's showing that you know the house. Is All right, like, yeah, and and, yeah, and just... also the the position of uh, the deck in the back towards the yard and the position of the entrance. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm just saying unless unless the gardening is all part of the application, we're not approving that. So. Yeah, I understand. I agree, though, it's good to see the screening because of the neighbors on the other side. And it's nice. The, okay. It's comprehensive. To me, to me, that's sort of apologetic about the architecture, but OK. Uh, yeah. That's, well, I mean, you know. All right, anyway. Go ahead, go ahead. Carry just... on. I mean, I guess we presented what we we trying to propose. Yeah. We are open to questions. We probably yeah. have some pictures of things that we've done before that we can show. Um, yeah, that we have ready. So I don't know how you want if you if you want. Let me, let me ask one other thing. Do you have any photographs of the existing house from the street? And the you can't see it please. from the street. You can't see it. The only photo that you have is when you pass the driveway, and you can see it at an angle that actually shows the sign. Mm. Uh, but straight up, so we have something that we can show you. Have it actually there. So the only photo you have it in your set is this mm -hmm. photo that you can see where you pass the driveway, because the entire front in front of the house is fully planted with trees, uh, evergreens all the way across. So only passing the driveway you could catch that kind of view. Other than that, you can't see it. I don't know how much you can see from here. That's good. I just thought it's useful to have a sense of scale there. Yeah. What about the neighbors? Um, meaning uh, images of the neighbors' homes. We had we, we, we yeah we 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 attached all that. I mean, neighborhood um, is uh, all mixed up here. So, well, this is a house that's uh, not direct neighbor, but that's a couple of houses down, three houses down. That's the house you did. Yeah. <laughs> but, but there are two other houses. Okay, wait. <laughs> we love uh, so three the, the, show me the show me what's your name. No, that no, no, no. The, the Renee. Renee. Do you want to show the house on the right and the house? Yeah, we show you both. We just going through it because we were all staples. She's ripping it out. So this is the house. Does John Lightner want to come on? On the right. Okay, uh, this is the house on the left, which is also right. a very large, largish house, <clears throat> and, and that's the, across the street. It's the you know the which is big too, yeah. mid century one, mid, mid century that house that was redone, redone recently and rebuilt to the second floor, with the second floor, and then mm -hmm. the neighbor of that one you have. It's the same yeah, it's, there's another one next to it, which is up the street or across the street from us. It's the other mid-century, but that is still. Yeah. On, on. So, it, it, I mean, I know where, where, where you're coming from, I think. And then, you know, some people might have that question. Um, going on. The neighborhood here is mixed. Uh, there are quite a few modern houses, and I'm not saying everybody has to like them. 
because everybody has different tastes. And I, I, you know, I understand and appreciate any comments and I'm, I'm completely fine with it. Uh, this property is a prop, the house is set so far away from the street that with this, that's why I put up the screening on the board uh, and it was not to apologize for the design or anything. It was basically to show that we're taking the opportunity. I mean, we do modern houses. We believe that it's the future of construction, at least to a certain point. I mean, I believe that if you buy a house that was built in 1950s, 60s, 70s, you kind of see where it, when it was built. Now you buy one that was built in 1921, 22, I mean, 2021, 22, you, you also see where, when it was built. So we took the opportunity of this property that's so large, uh, we potentially probably could have subdivided it. We didn't go there because with all the screening and the, and the privacy, it becomes almost like a house by itself, secluded for the street, from the street. And it can be one of a, a new modern houses in the area, we believe so. And, you know, uh, I'm not sure if all the neighbors agree with it, but we spoke at least with two neighbors and they're all fine with it. And we showed them how we're going to screen it and how we're going to protect it. I don't think that it will, I think it will be a good improvement for the neighborhood in, in, in a value way. And it's just a new house. So, you know, we, yeah. are, we are in the time. And I, I again, I, I appreciate, I understand that some people may not like it and that's fine. It's I just, think it looks good. I like Absolutely. the house. Thank you. I'm, not, okay. I'm not challenging the house. I was just trying to. You don't have okay. to screen the house. I mean, it I, looks yeah, fine. exactly. I'm just, and yeah. I just wanted to, like, just to focus on the house itself. Well, I, I think, fine. yeah, there are <laughs> certainly large modern houses. Certainly to the one to the left is a large modern house. There's a large modern house across the street, and there's other houses that are smaller. I do think there's some people in the audience, though, that, that wish to comment. Yeah, yeah, sure. We welcome yeah. that. Uh, Mr. Leitner. Am I, uh, am I now visible and Well, you're portable? visible as, as your name is visible, at, but you're, uh, you're not as a, a photo. In the video is not live. Okay, well, I'll, I'll speak then at least. So we uh, bought our house um, 24 years ago and our house was the exact house as the one next to us at 800 Rushmore. It was built by the same people. Uh, our kids, when they were younger, used to go next door um, to our neighbors and walk through their house, knowing it was the same house as ours. They were like in our house at the same time. So when we renovated our house, we had a, uh, a deep feeling for the neighborhood and we tried to keep in character with the neighborhood when we did our renovation. Um, so we think the proposed plan is not in keeping with the neighborhood, not in character. Just say, uh, John, just to yep. clarify, are you the house then to the, across the street or to the left or? Uh, if, if you're facing 800, we're the direct house to the left. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay. So, so, so we don't think that the design of this um, proposed house is in keeping with the neighborhood at all. Uh, I'm, I'm unclear why you say that because your house is, is, is itself quite large and, and and you know kind of a postmodern house it's it is also quite different than than the other surrounding houses itself well not, uh, not i recognize all. this one is a different style than your house but but it doesn't then there's a california modern one like kind of across the street a couple of them one the only one that's quite large i'm, I'm having a little trouble understanding i guess where where you feel it's inconsistent, I guess. And can I just tag on to that? Are you looking at the home on Sini that they constructed? Can you see that from your home? We, we heard it for the entire construction process and we can yeah. see some of it when we walk into our front yard. And we don't because think it's it is, with it, the neighborhood you know, at all either. Yes. So has a similar, I mean, it is different from some of the homes, but there are a few that look like that. And well, only the ones that yeah. they've built and we don't think any well, of them will well, concert okay. with the neighborhood. All right. So uh, when we, when we renovated our house, we kept the entire brick facade on the first floor. That's the way the house was when we bought it. And we added um, uh, shingling to the second floor again, to try to keep it in concert with the neighborhood. We didn't make a modern house. 
we just added a second floor to the exact foundation footing that existed before we bought the house. We didn't expand it at all. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, inter I'm interested that you don't think you have a house that looks like a modern house. Um, that is, it's uh, not you know, modern at all in anybody's mind. Interesting. Oh, I'm, OK. Well, and I'm, I'm anybody, looking anybody, at it right I mean, now. It's not. I mean, it's not. It's not as contemporary as as this one, but it certainly is. I, I, I call it if, traditional. If I may, <laughs> can I just yeah. respond to a comment a little bit? Uh, I respect the comments, and I could, I guess, somewhat understand why people are concerned sometimes. But again. Uh, I mean, we all own, we buy properties, we own them. Uh, I think we have, I mean, everybody has different tastes and different style. So uh, what we're trying to do, and I want to point it out again, that's why I, at some point I put up that, that landscape plan. Um, I mean, we've built many houses in the neighborhood like that. Maybe, maybe many people may not like them, but a lot of people that like them. Uh, and we want to make sure that we will not be in any kind of confrontation with the neighborhood. So as, as uh, Mr. Binter, Mr. Binter pointed, there are other houses in the neighborhood that I believe are kind of the same or, or not the same, but they are already, already in modern style. And my, our, our objective is to make sure that there is proper screening and proper separation between our properties in the way where we have two different houses. Yes, they're not different, that house is modern slightly. Ours is more contemporary or very new modern because it's being built right now. I don't think they compete. They're just different. I mean, uh, that house is different. Our house is going to be, you'll see, was just built. But then you drive up the street, the house on, on the right side, you can see is kind of an older house. It's a different style. And you look across. I mean, Rushmore has that, uh, that, that, that uh, mm -hmm. potential, that it's a mix of the, where you drive down. It's not only our house, it's other people. Uh, that it's a mix and I don't think we're doing harm to each other. I think we're just improving the neighborhood. So if I, that, that, that would be my comment because it draws different people from different areas, different generations, maybe younger people with kids wanna move in. I believe that's what we should do. We shouldn't just keep it exactly the same. I understand if I put this on a quarter acre property in the middle of Forest Avenue. Okay, you know, it, it, it's concerning, but I'm, I don't think that's, that applies to this particular property. Uh, that's how I believe. All right. Well, anyway, are there any other uh, audience members that wish to uh, comment or participate? No one else has a hand up. Okay. Um, so we, are we in a position to move on to uh, a, a vote then? Prove it. Hands down. I am. Okay. And. Yes. Okay. Uh, motion. I'll make a motion. Second. I, I second. Okay. Cindy. Yes. Larry. Yes. Yvonne. Yes. Um, Andrew. Yes. You're smirking. And I just, I have, I have one comment. Yes. You may make a comment. Uh -oh, there's someone else. Which is, which is, that's a big flat roof that you're going to come back asking. The solar, solar panels. panels. <laughs> I thought of that too. I and, mean, um, <laughs> and I strongly recommend you try to make the venting in a way that accommodates the panels from the get go. I, I appreciate the comment. And uh, I mean, every house that we've done so far, not everybody took the opportunity because we saw, I'm a builder, right? So I sell yes. them. I don't always put them up because I don't get money back for it. You know, that's how it works. It's too bad, but that's how it is. Mm -hmm. But every single house we have built so far has chases uh -huh. yep. and ability to put solar panels. Some people have done right. it, not everybody. I wish everybody right. does it. And I'm just saying don't put a vent right in the middle of the room. <laughs> Oh my okay. gosh. Anyway, anyway go I'm, that's I'm, not, I'm, that's how the lines are drawn. I, I vote in, in favor as well. Yeah. Um, and now it's there's even though we voted, somebody came in after the yeah. voting and said and had a comment. Um, I guess you can make a comment if you like. 
Um, it's uh, Anna, you're muted. And Anna, sorry, I sorry, yes. Hi, sorry, I was raising my hand, but I, I guess it didn't go through earlier. Um, I agree with the previous comments. I live on the corner of Forest and Rushmore. And um, to me, the new, the other homes that have been built by this group do not fit in with the neighborhood. Um, and to me, they look completely out of place. I think if you were in California, if you were on the beach, that's a different, that's a different look. Um, but I do not think they fit in. Okay, thank you. And I don't think that the house to the left, which is directly across from me, I wouldn't um, consider that a modern or contemporary home. Anyway, a Lightner home. Okay. Dumbass. All right. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm sorry you didn't get your uh, a, a comment earlier, but um, for whatever reason, it's difficult with the Zoom situation. I, th I think, I guess, trying to speak for the board, I think the thinking is that by virtue of, you know, scale and, and so forth, that the house fits in nicely, that it's, it's not necessarily that they all need to be of a you know, a, a traditional style or a colonial style. Um, I mean, we're, we're basically kind of architects ourselves and to our eye, the, the house to the left is a contemporary house. Um, I'm not kind of sure which is yours. There's two, there are two California modern houses there um, on Rushmore across the street. So th there are a lot of houses there. You know, and, and as you go through the neighborhood, there's a lot of, there's a mix of, you know, quite modern houses uh, we, and also there's houses by uh, Stanford White, you know, we, there's a, a range. So I think it's, it's more significant that they kind of fit in by character and uh, massing and, and how, how, they're, how they're done, you know, versus that they be uh, all, you know, kind of brick center hall colonials or what have you. Anyway, that's, I'm, I guess I'm speaking for the board and actually, I guess I'm speaking for myself, but anyway, uh, I'll leave it at that. Um, I, you're not going to be satisfied with that, I suppose, but I'm uh, just trying to add some uh, perspective. Um, anyway, thank you all for your comments. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night. And we have mm -hmm. bye -bye. one more here. Um, the very patient 214 North Berry Avenue. Wow. Is the applicant here? Um, he was just William Alicia. His name is there. Yes, we're here. Okay, hey. got you. Hello. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hi. Oh, I guess you can hear and see me fine. Whoop. Mm -hmm. Hold on. And we see your screen. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, we're good. Hi, uh, William Alicia, architect. I'm uh, representing uh, the Sice family, um, young family uh, with uh, two young kids. Um, we are having a go at 214 North Barry Avenue. Uh, and in doing so, we're going to actually demolish a small cottage that's on the site. Uh, I can show you that uh, existing house. It's a one story. Uh, can you see that? Yes. Yes. So that's the that's what's there now. That's existing, and um, what we're going to do is replace that with the new house. The new house you have in front of you. I'm going to show you a rendering of the new house now. Uh, that's the rendering there. 
-hmm. And that will uh, replace uh, the little wee cottage that's on the site now. We are keeping uh, the character of the, the wee cottage, I'm gonna call it, and that it uh, communicates uh, really nicely with the sidewalk. You know, you can see the kids walk by and it's kind of, it's, uh, it, it has a, a very sort of a warm feeling to it. Hence the beginning of the design started with the integration of the, the, that circulation with a, a porch, an entrance porch, which you see on the rendering. That entrance porch uh, is also low and that's intentional to keep that, um, that communication going with the sidewalk um, uh, pedestrian walkway. So uh, the house is essentially a two and a half story, modern farm style, I'm gonna call it. And I, I know that uh, there's a lot of different ways to describe this, but that's the best I can come up with now. Uh, it's a modern far, uh, 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 farm style house that's pulled toward the front of the, uh, the site, actually set back further than the cottage, but that's also intentional to maintain uh, the beautiful lot. The lot is 188 feet deep, and we wanted to keep most of that lot open and usable as a possible garden slash farm, but also recreational for the family to grow into. Uh, the house is clad in a uh, hardy plank siding. It's an Arctic white. So this is a true rendition of color uh, with, uh, you'll see some of the trim uh, uh, with uh, Marvin windows that are black. Uh, the roof is also, it's an architectural timberline roof uh, high definition on the main roof. Uh, and we do have a, a sort of detail with the uh, raised rib roofing as an accent along the, um, the porch and the side of the house. The house is basically pretty much, um, and it, it, it's a reflection of what's going on in the neighborhood. Uh, to the right, we have a, uh, a house that has a, uh, so dormer and uh, can you show that that one? Okay. Uh, see one to the north. Uh, north. This is the house to the north of the uh, just to the north of the site. Uh, gable and dormer, uh, kind of the same um, vocabulary. So we're using the same vocabulary. We believe in integrating in the sites uh, uh, with the rest of the neighborhood and. Uh, on to the left of the, the house, the south, mm -hmm. is um, this guy here, which is kind of a raised uh, uh, ranch. And you'll see the little cottage to the right of, of that existing house. We've actually pulled the new house further away from that lot line uh, so that they have more breathing room. Uh, uh, so there's more space between the houses. Didn't feel too comfortable about Although we could have maintained this uh, uh, side lot line, we actually expanded it. So we go back to the rendering. What about the house across the street? Oh, of course the street, short. Sure. Of course street, we have a little, a bit of a different story. I'll show you that right now. It's uh, across the street there. You have a, a Victorian uh, set back from the, so uh, from the sidewalk, uh, good distance. The, the pickup on this one were the columns uh, with the porch. So in this instance, we I, I put pick the uh, influence of the porch, the columns, and that sort of uh, uh, very sort of uh, 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 personal communication with the street. So I just keep talking. Uh, house size is uh, uh, approximately 3,700 square feet, uh, 2,000, approximately 2,000 on one floor, the first floor, and uh, the balance on the second floor. The house is, is a, a little bit, uh, uh, I think it's interesting because it has a central access hallway, which divides the house into uh, 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 habitable rooms and has a terminus at the end of the house with a uh, a fully vaulted uh, living room, dining room that leads into the kitchen. So it flows together with a, uh, a breakfast nook. 
that space in the back of the house all flows together. Um, the uh, the rest of the house is is in a is sort of traditional layout. However, the the central access hallway is reflected on the second story, um, so that there's some coherence in the circulation of the house. We're not seeing any of that right now. We're just seeing. Uh, we'll show you some plans. Let's go. That's the site plan there. So you see how it sits on the site. Uh, the driveway is up on, on top of the um, uh, the page. Let's see the, the first floor plan. Next one. This is, that's the cellar. It has a, a cell, an open cellar, unfinished. Here's the first floor. In front of you, uh, the bottom is the street. You can scan this thing. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay, so the, the bottom of the floor plan faces the street. That's the porch. Uh, we've kind of hidden the, the garage uh, and put the garage access on the side again so that it would be a more uh, warm kind of approach to the house. Uh, so you, you're not integrated with the, with the car uh, uh, culture so much. Um, you can see what I was talking about. There is a central uh, access hallway, which um, is is buffered on the left side by a, a central stair, which uh, winds up to up to the second floor and goes down to the cellar. And the terminus of that hallway is the what I was talking about. That full section at the back there is an integrated um, uh, cathedral ceiling at the living room dining room area. It drops above the um, the kitchen but is open. And then uh, behind the kitchen is service pantry and laundry room. And in the back of the house, very back of the house, we have a breakfast nook, which also integrates with the kitchen and dining area. That's also serviced by uh, what would be a deck uh, to the left of the breakfast nook. And then you have direct access, you can pull that down a little bit, direct access to the rear of the yard. We can go to the second floor now. So the second floor is um, shrink that a little bit. I don't know if I can see. Maybe minimize the scale. Okay, so here's a. If you can bring it down further, I want to see this terrace. So on the second floor, um, it's essentially a kind of a traditional layout with the master suite. Um, the uh, everything is revolving around that central stair. Uh, what we have upstairs are basically three bedrooms and a master suite uh, and uh, three bathrooms. The uh, area above the uh, the living room dining area is uh, a flat. Uh, it's a built up roof pitched to drain. Uh, it's not making a statement. Didn't want to increase the bulk in the, any kind of bulk on the house. Wanted to maintain the scale, uh, so kept that as a parapet wall uh, if you from behind. We can show you some uh, elevations moving from there. If I'm going too fast, guys, say something. There's the front elevation as shown on the rendering, and we can move to the next elevation. Again. You see the, the gable and the um, the dormers. The back of the house here uh, with two gables uh, kind of picking up on the front elevation. Um, access to the rear yard from the, uh, the right side, that's the living room area, uh, the living dining area. With the, that'll have a 12 foot ceiling in it. Uh, it's all access to that deck that then access access to the rear yard. Um, you will have uh, above that, the uh, that deck area or the, the vaulted section are two windows and they're really just to give light to the stair and uh, the hallway. On the left, you have that breakfast nook, which is the one story. It also repeats the, the uh, uh, parapet wall. Again, not wanting to overcomplicate the uh, facade uh, to keep it simple and quiet. Uh, that uh, that sliding door is from uh, the bedroom, and then you have uh, another window to uh, the same bedroom. Uh, to the left, you see the 
protrusion of what is the garage. And uh, that's it. We can show the other elevation, north and south. This is the, uh, the side elevation with a uh, driveway access is the garage. And it's the same kind of conversation we're having uh, throughout the house. Uh, party plank, horizontal, uh, set off by a, a vertical uh, raised rib roof on the lower floor. Uh, the same uh, black and white. Again, the windows are black and it'll be all Arctic white on the siding and the uh, architectural roof on, on the top. Uh, the, uh, the, the section of the little protrusion on the right side is the breakfast nook, uh, basically articulating a very little special space. It's not so big, but it has its own identity, very cozy. Uh, we'll go to the next elevation. And this is the other side elevation um, with the same kind of conversation uh, art articulating the architecture, uh, trying to keep it uh, quiet, not too, uh, not too busy, easy to understand and to relate to. The uh, front of the house is on the right. Uh, that shows you the porch and the back of the house is on the left. Uh, we can show you a section now so you get an idea of the volume, what's going on. And this is the section through the house uh, which shows you the, uh, the primary uh, aspect of, of this section. It shows you the relationship of the living dining area. It says kitchen beyond, uh, has a drop ceiling, but it shows you the relationship of that to the house itself and the circulation pattern. As you walk in this, into a centralized um, uh, stairway, you have also a visual continuity. You can look in and down into the living area as you move, move up or down that stair. And that stair is basically a connecting spine to the floors. Well, just the rest is just details, um, open to any questions you may have. Are there corner boards on the trim or is it the hardy plank meshes at all the corners? I'm just curious. Oh, yeah, we're doing the, the corner uh, the corner trim. You can see it on the rendering. If you could bring the rendering up again. Because on the elevations, there's no corner trim. I know. We were kind of uh, a little pressed on time. I, I missed that one. I right. see. OK, but, so there is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, oh, looks nice to me. The uh, <laughs> it's hardly planned horizontal. <laughs> and uh, okay, down and groove. That what kind of? I'm sorry. Know, is it? Oh, that's a hardy. Plank. It? Uh, it's a oh. hardy plank is a cementious board. Ah, cementious board. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, the gables on the front, the little dormer over the entrance and the gable over the main house are actually board and batten, but, but it's the same material. It'll be the hardy plank with a board and batten detail, uh, giving it a little uh, different uh, movement in the facade. So it's, it's a, uh, a little more interesting to the eye. And is it, does it go right down to the lawn over there on the left? Yeah, there's actually there'll be a freeze board along that section of actually the um, the um, uh, the cellar comes up uh, uh, slightly on the side, but we're going to actually integrate it with the house. So it'll be it look it will look like a continuation of it, but it'll be a, a freeze board at the bottom there. Okay. Okay. Can you please yeah. share that? Your neighbors, the uh, neighbor neighboring homes again, please. Sure. Uh, let's see. The neighbor houses are oldest one. The house uh, to the north. That's across the street. That's the Victorian. Mm -hmm. uh, influences uh, columns, the porch <laughs> scale. Uh, to the north, it is uh, this yellow house here. Obvious in influences on uh, some of the roof and the dormers. And the house to the south is this one here. Uh, 
the only thing I could pick up on this one, to be honest with you guys, was uh, maybe the coloration of the, uh, you know, the black and white kind of uh, that they had going. So uh, I am going to offer an opinion. I first of all commend you. I really like the design of the home, uh, the materials used, etc. I personally find the black and white very stark, considering the neighbors and the neighborhood you're in. Um, and I just I put that out there because mm -hmm. I'm thinking just very personal here. The black, as I said, is very stark. Is it possible to go to a possibly a slate gray, which would, which would offset that slightly? Uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you. It, it does read a little dark in the rendering. Uh, that is a, uh, the roof is actually charcoal. Uh, okay. mm. We couldn't get that color in the rendering at the, at the time. And mm -hmm. the and my response to you about this is that I've done. Uh, by the way, the porch will be uh, uh, will be a slate gray. Uh, that will wrap down. It's actually showing as stone right now, but it'll be slate gray. And I've done gray on white. And uh, the, the 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 issue I have with it is that it goes from uh, create it, it goes from this dynamic to actually falling flat. Uh, I've done a lot of different colors with houses and in the sunlight, it does change. It doesn't read like this. It does get muted in, in actual, uh, with the sunlight. This is a little stark, the rendering, I, 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 I can see that. The windows are, are Marvin standard black. Um, and I think you've probably seen that somewhere. Again, they look a little blacker than they are here, um, but my experience with doing these uh, colors on houses is that it doesn't, it's not as striking or as, as different as it, as it appears now. So if I understand you correctly, you're saying the roof is not black, but more of a gray? It's actually a charcoal. But it's okay. a two that, high that, charcoal. You, you, already, you already answered my question. That's oh. fine. The window Do you have samples? With, I'm sorry. The, uh, no, sorry, the window sorry, is Larry, black. Is, if I can get samples, sure. Yeah, that's not a problem. The, and uh, the windows are, they're not a custom color, they're standard Marvin black. And, and and that's fine. You already answered the fact that the fact that the roof is not black. All right. Okay. That that was my biggest concern. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I, I kind of had the same feeling. It's too, too, too stark a difference. I mean, but yeah, but charcoal is, is much uh, warmer and mm -hmm. it would probably blend better. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Sounds I don't good. even mind the black charcoal is fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I will say that the uh, entire street is macadam and that's uh, black. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I understand, you know, I've done this, uh, I don't know how many times already and I've gone through this. Uh, actually, I've, I've had a, a, a house that I did uh, where I chose a sort of uh, a uh, terracotta color for one of the, uh, and it's more modern, one of the protrusions. And uh, we changed the color to a gray. And the owner uh, said to me, you know, I wasn't sure. I, I liked it before, but now the gray, it just makes me go to sleep. So it kind of washed out. It didn't create an architectonic movement in, in this particular case. Just my experience. But I take what you're saying to heart and charcoal is uh, definitely maybe the, the move on this. No, no, no. I, I, I think you're misunderstanding. Okay. The windows are still outlined in black. You're yeah. saying the roof is a charcoal. What yeah. is the roof above the porch itself, that entranceway? Is that, that black? Or is that, a... that is, and that's a choice also. That is a black. Uh, the, the rest of the roof is a charcoal. So there's a different, it's not, it's not black on black. It's not, you know, like the Westerns. Mm -hmm. Personally, I'm okay with the black on the lower level. Okay. Right. As long as all the roof is not the black. Yeah. I'm with that 100%. I'm the, curious uh, about the, the porch. Is, is it deep enough to, to use to sit or anything? No, it looks so five, shallow. Uh, yeah, that's the rendering. It's five feet at the narrow section, and mm -hmm. uh, then it bumps another foot. Uh, so it's, it's six foot six at the entrance and five foot on the, um, I mean, so it's, it's just deep enough for like some chairs. Intentionally, right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you can sit and-, and uh, I could. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, I got it. Yeah, again, my experience with porches, you know, I've, I've designed big porches, they never used, uh, they're used occasionally. Mm -hmm. So functionally speaking, I'm now uh, creating maybe five foot porches, which are, like you said, enough for a good comfortable chair to sit down and have coffee. Mm -hmm. My only comment really about the front, looking at the rendering, again, yeah. was the, um, the unneeded extra walk in front of the porch, since you could just step down from the porch into the driveway, it looks like it's, and it's kind of limiting, I'm a gardener, it kind of limits that, but it's your choice. Oh, you, oh, you're talking kind of chops up the front little lawn there into uh, two yeah. like unusable pieces. I know. I, again, well, I've tried to break that down by using fingers in the front uh, continuation to the sidewalk, using mm -hmm. fingers of, of uh, bluestone. So letting the grass sort of uh, filter through. That mm -hmm. side, that side piece, um, it's again another issue. Oh, by the way, we have it 188 feet in the rear of of what's going to be no i understand but this is about what it looks like from the street right so i'm just right. saying yeah i it, think part of the harshness here is it is right on the street and it's yeah. in this case we don't see any sort of how <gasps> how greenery would affect the house so but um, i'm fine i'm fine i just might okay i'm just saying i wouldn't have done it but you well can do i it. mean i you know the, the only thing i can put out there with that is that i've done this as well it, it's to because the the truth is that that pathway is probably the most used in many instances. It's car pulls up, people get out, they run to the out. Yeah. But I've also done stepping stones, more Japanese in feeling, mm -hmm. so that you have more of what you're talking about. And I, I actually like that idea, where you have green uh, green space in between the stones, which I did in the, in the front with the fingers. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a good point. Yeah, and well, to Andrew's point before, there's probably chairs in the way on the porch too. Okay. Just curious. Okay. Not a make or break for me. I was just pointing out that it seems kind of odd that that front lawn there is chopped up like that. Yeah. But it could be also the perspective of, of it, just it the is, uh, Because that sidewalk uh, is kind of squashed. That that front uh, patch is a side is actual uh, it's supposed to be a sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. Let's see. And, and we've actually set this back a little further than. Uh, that's uh, 27 feet from the lot line, the house yeah. is. Okay, so that's fine. Yeah. Well, anyway, I think uh, moving along, is there, yeah. are there any uh, audience uh, people wanting to uh, say anything? Uh, no hands. Can no I, hand. uh, maybe Faisal, the owner, uh, wants to say a few words, I'm not sure. Okay. Are you there? Yes, he is. Oh, okay. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes. Hi, Hi there. Yeah, no. Uh, I don't have anything specific to say other than uh, yeah, we we did our best with uh, with um, with well to fit in the neighborhoods. Uh, we like the results. We appreciate also your comments, and um, uh, that's it, really. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Faisal. Thank you. Okay. Well, then, um, could I get a uh, a motion to vote? Then I guess. I make a motion. Okay. I second. Turn my camera's off. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. I make a motion. Uh, Argue. Uh, Cindy. Second. No, I, I meant if you oh, want to yes, so yes. the top of my screen at the moment. So I picked I'm it. a yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Larry? Yes. Andrew? Yes. Yvonne? Yes. And I'm good too. Very good. Enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. All. Okay. Thank uh, you. I guess that uh, concludes tonight's festivities. What a um, night. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so um, I would like a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion, motion. for that. Second. 
Um, any opposed? No. Okay, uh, Barbara, you could stop the recording. We're still on William Alicia's screen, but. Oh yeah, yeah. William. <laughs> All right, how do you say it? You can just exit. Yeah.